Hey, what's up, everybody? This is John M A T X bringing you from Texas. And what we're, what we're doing right now is a, a live game show for all you MMA hopefuls right there. Uh, our game show is called Do You Even Know MMA, Bro? So uh, we, we have a few uh, contestants here. One is named, I completely spelled it wrong, Vondale Silva. I know how to say it, but uh, uh, he's one of our guests. Uh, say hello to, uh, to our crowd. Yeah, hello, it's uh, Vendale Silva. How's everybody doing okay today? Okay. It, it sounds like you killed a few uh, people on the way over here. Like, uh, how, how does it feel to strangle a little bit? Yeah, you know, it's okay, you know, it's another day, you know, because, uh, fuck the UFC. Well, we always know you had a colorful past with the UFC. Um, it's glad to have you on our show. Uh, now, now we're, we're gonna have, a, a you know, another person, uh, Hector Lombard, you know, uh, with his, uh, massive, uh, non gracious self, uh, you know, uh, here today in the studio. Can you want to say hi, Hector? He's working studio, man. What is going on, man? He's, uh, my kid, man. And uh, che, um, everybody do great. Okay, I do great, man. Bro, does that shirt even fit? Uh, it looks like you you barely breathing right now. You you, you sure you're, you're all right? <laughs> Bro, I get all the good, man. Uh, they love me, and um, you know it's it's pretty good, man. I do a good time. Well, it's great to have you on, Hector. And uh, right right now we're even going to uh, someone even more uh, notable. Uh, you know. He's straight out of Canada, USA. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have the GSPD, George St. Pierre. What's up, George? Uh, hello, everybody doing out there in the, the D land. <laughs> um, hello, um, everybody. All right, 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 thanks, George. Yes, George, we, we, we love hearing you talk, I mean, as much as you do. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, for now, you know, uh, if, uh, you know, we're gonna start off with a few questions, uh, just to kind of uh, see what kind of knowledge base y'all have. Uh, you know, first question we have. Uh, l l let's see if one of y'all get it right. Name a former welterweight UFC champion. Hey, I know this one, man. Um, uh, the one time, man, uh, I took on that guy. And um, um, Matt Hughes, uh, and not impressed by his performance, man. And I uh, said, uh, uh, Matt Hughes, uh, uh, I'm not impressed by your performance, man. And uh, <laughs> knocked the guy out, man. I took him by the arm bar, man. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty good uh, fight, man. I had a tree fight with the guy, you know. And uh, one time, you know, he get me slip, but uh, you know, I'm back for uh, I train, uh, you know, with Veras Abi. And uh, we trained very hard uh, for my career uh, with that guy, you know. And um, so, uh, yeah, it's a good fight, man. Well, you know, one day you need to stop uh, living in the past and, uh, you know, come back to UFC. And, uh, well, I mean, I, I just, it's just egging me. I, I got to you know, are you, you know, if you come back to UFC, if we set you up with Johnny Hendricks, is that a fight that you'd be willing to come back to? And yeah, that guy is still in the UFC, man. Um, you know, I definitely gotta rethink um, my training camp. You know, and uh, uh, talk to my coach. And uh, you know, vacation pretty good, man. <laughs> yeah, I, you gotta talk to your family again, or are you? <laughs> Yeah, uh, how's your pastor doing? Like, yeah, I mean, does he? You need his input too to, you know, <laughs> give you some blessing or to get your mind right to find Johnny again, or is it just something that's avoidable for you? Hey, man, you know this time, man. Maybe I uh, don't come back. You know, tell that guy retire. You know, maybe uh, maybe I do come back, but maybe I don't come back because I uh, tell that guy retire. You know, who know? All right, well, uh, we're, we're we're glad that you're even thinking about it or that you thought about it. You know, before that question. Um, but you know, let, let, let's move on. Let, let's see who else uh, can possibly name uh, you know something a uh, hard fact from uh, an MMA past. So, real quick, who is the pre president of the UF fucking C? Hey man, I know this one man. It's uh, the Dana White. Fuck a Dana White. And uh, the UFC. They don't treat me no good. It's uh, they think me. You know, it's the scared of what I, what I do to the fight and they uh, show some of us can 
and my boy Tai is very good, my boy Gigi is very good, and they just, they just say it for fuck it and why, and you know, it's many times I shine very hard. Uh, uh, somebody compared uh, Bellator, Bellator, I'd be a sponsor, come sponsor the better late Such season. hostility it seems like you have, I mean, we were only trying to find out why, uh, you actually want to fight the UFC president Dana White? I, I heard they've been giving you a lot of uh, headaches and um, uh, you know making you take like steroid tests or whatever, see if you're doping. Is that any of the reason why you avoided the last couple fights? Hey, you come to my gym, you come to Vanderlei's gym. I did. I trained how to run from commission. I trained how to run, uh, run away from the the commission. Do not try for a no drug test. <laughs> oh, oh, it's for oh, it was for another commission. Yeah, uh, it definitely the uh, NCAA um, definitely has something out for you. Uh, but again, we have got <laughs> another uh, uh, question here coming off the the dome. Uh, let, let, let's see wh which one of y'all can name a uh, the uh, tough fighter coach from one of the recent seasons. Come on, uh, wh who got this question? Hey, I know the one time guy. Uh, shut up, everybody. Listen, I know the one time the guy. Um, uh, one of my artists, uh, artist fighter my career was uh, the Masera, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, he was uh, he trained uh, very hard uh, for the fight. You know, but uh, I was ready for the guy. You know, the second time around, uh, the first time uh, he hit me pretty hard. You know, it uh, shook my uh, equilibrium. Uh, you know, uh, the the make me feel the uh, the wibo, You know, and so uh, I fell down. You know, uh, but I get back up. You know, the second fight, and I uh, I fight the fight. You know, I should have trained hard. Order for that first one, you know, and the guy, you know, a, a lucky bunch man, you know. Well, that's a, a whole lot of what I didn't ask for, but <laughs> uh, thanks again, George. You're still living in the past, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, it's just the common folk want to see you actually fight somebody. Um, but again, uh, it sounds like you're running scared from uh, Johnny Hendricks. But uh, if you could decide to come back, welcome back. Whether that go to Bill or two. So uh, I have a, a, another question. Um, it, it, I know it's rare. Every once in a while, we get some people from the UK. W name a fighter from the UK. Fuck Michael Bisping, man. Hey, man. Fuck Michael Bisping. Hey, no good, man. Hey, listen, he's trying very hard, but no, I train harder. Hey, and it's a fuck that guy, man. Uh, I don't like that guy. He talk too much. Uh, that, 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 that shit. You know, he talk too much of the shit, man. And uh, Fuck that guy, Do you know, he's no good, I don't know, you need to get kicked out of the USA or something, get a rape in the ass or something, I don't know what the fuck, man. I mean, he, he is a bitch, I mean, he, he does like to talk a lot, but, um, again, you know, it, it just seems like these MMA fighters still have a little bit of uh, beef left in the cage that they want to handle, um, but yeah, uh, uh, thanks, uh, thank you for that answer, uh, let, let's go on to our next question, um, What's the a biggest uh, promotion of mixed martial arts that y'all can name? Fuck the UFC. That's all I say. Because did you know the UFC is a big time skirt. They take the fight of money. They don't pay me no good money. They don't pay no fight no good money. They don't know why. I fuck you. I fuck you. And the UFC, I fuck you. If you a girl, I fuck you. Very hot. I shine very hard to fuck you. All right. Well, I uh, th thank thank you for all the fucking information you gave <laughs> us on that fucking answer. Um, so you know, let, let's keep let's keep going going on with this. Uh, you know, uh, apparently y'all do know some information. Um, w one of the last questions that we have, um, which is double the points. You know, if you do get this question right. Um, then you actually, um, you know, we we'll, we'll might even, you know, maybe sponsor you two, three weeks out from the fight so you get a little extra cash to make up. <laughs> How much money are you making? Don't lie, we know your records off the Reebok deal. In 10 seconds. 
Time for 10 seconds on the clock. And the final countdown. <laughs> yeah, okay, I got the answer. The first answer, okay. Uh, I know it's for all of us, you know, uh, but uh, I got the answer. Um, uh, no make no money of the Reebok deal uh, because I make all the money from uh, the Nike and the Gatorade. <laughs> American Love Day Gatorade and uh, Nike and at uh, one time they sponsored me for the fight you know I was uh, fighting uh, Carlos Condent and uh, you know he, he kicked me very hard in the third round I, you definitely have been the one to answer the most because it seems like you're the only one living in your past to even know it that well uh, I mean most people when they get flashed they don't remember they just thought they were just getting hit and they just went with it but anyways uh, let, let, let's go ahead and move on uh, thanks George for that um, information again too much listen we don't make no money off of the Reebok uh, the fight because uh, the GSC don't want to refight because uh, I tried to want to fight the uh, fuck Daniel I tried to want to fuck uh, Lorenzo I tried for to fuck the GSC no, they don't keep it on the Reebok League and so uh, find me on uh, Twitter maybe to sponsor uh, the expert because uh, a very good shine out the Muay Thai Alright, well thank you for that uh, Muay Thai last word thrown in there to your sponsors but let's move on to the next person Alright, what about you on your deal? Uh, listen man Eh, the dude's stupid. Fuck the fuck the fuck the stupid. The stupid. Mike, 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 this thing is stupid. Eh, Ben Oscar is stupid. This is stupid. All of this shit is stupid. Fuck it. Fuck you. Thank you for the uh, fuck you, fuck you too um, response. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, that was the you fucking no MMA show. Uh, I'm glad to have everybody out on here, and uh, we're gonna go do some bro shit, and I'll see you later. Good night. Loaded. M M A podcast. Going back to drinking beer and eating true up. There you go. Hacking off is the best exercise you can have. There's pleasure in their workout. UFC clamming in your window, snatching your people up. If they made basketball illegal, it wouldn't even bother me. I don't, I don't like other sports. They're boring to me. Everything else pales in comparison to the excitement of mixed martial arts fighting. Oh, oh, it. I will be successful, I will dominate it. Where I come from, you know, people like that get slapped. In my opinion? Oh, why is that? Because I said so. Because I'm going to put those hands on you worse than that dude did with mother kids up in the state. One second, we are underway. And we're back again, your boy Money Blake Weather over here with uh, my boy. Who is my whip? John M A T X, Austin, Texas, bitch. Now nah, what's up, I'm John? <laughs> Got arms bigger than your mama's titties. Hey. <laughs> uh, we're back at it again, man. Uh, got so much shit to talk about, so much shit to to discuss. Uh, John, draw some shit on them that they missed. If you if you, if you missed us the last three weeks, what have you missed? Uh, you basically missed John Jones getting his uh, title stripped. Uh, let's see. Uh, you, 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 of course, didn't miss the last fight, Manny Pacquiao versus Mayweather, uh, which, you know, it, it was a boxing match, but uh, not a, a dog fight like what most of us uh, fans are looking for. But um, And then the other thing uh, was just released is the Reebok deal and how... Uh, it seems like maybe uh, 60 40 percent, uh, 60 to 40 percent um, of the people actually do not like the deal and think the tier is rather, uh, you know, can't financially really help stabilize most of these fighters that are under like what five fights? So what, what's the limit? Do you know? 21? 21? 
uh, tw uh, 21 fights before they start making that some actually good money from that sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty much that's a, uh, w w let's say, uh, how many fights is that? Let's say if you fight once or twice at most a year. Man, that's a, damn, that's 10 years, yeah. I mean, that's not very much money for that amount of time, but I don't know. That That's just my uh, thought on it. I thought they'd be paying you know the fighters out a lot more on this Reebok deal but uh yeah uh well what else uh what were they talking about in the MMA award oh uh uh Conor McGregor's fucking monster deal that was another thing that was going on and everyone knows why that motherfucker got it because that nigga likes to talk shit yeah but yeah, anyways um yeah you know money talks and uh Conor McGregor walks. Yeah, Conor McGregor walks. Let's see, you know, he's been, he's been, you know, the stars have been aligning in his favor so far. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'm, of course, I'm going for Aldo to win that fight, but uh, Conor has a lot of energy behind him. But all right, here's Blake. Don't have to. All right, here, Blake. I was doing some shit with the fight pass. Grabbing your ass with the fight pass. Grabbing my ass with the fight pass. Uh, right now, we got special guests. Got uh Randy Vera, uh coach, head coach, head MMA coach over at Austin Kickboxing Academy. Uh we're gonna give him a call right now. Uh let me uh turn off some shit on my phone. Um, okay. I'll give him a call right now. Yeah, head head coach, uh Austin Kickboxing Academy. If you don't know about it. Go learn about it. If you ain't about it, go be about it. Uh, getting him on the phone right now. Yo, is this is this uh, Randy? Yeah, Randy. Randy, how's it going, man? This is uh, Blake Money Blake Weather with the uh, Loaded Joe's MMA podcast, man. You're here with me. And uh, my co-host, John. John, say hi real quick, man. Hey, what's up, man? This is John. Uh, how's everything going for you tonight so far? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Perfect, perfect, man. Well, uh, sorry about the late call. We ran into some technical difficulties, but we got everything back and running, man. And uh, we saw the Canelo and Kirkland fight. We had to catch that in the middle of our technical difficulties. Did you watch that fight, man? No, no. I'm actually uh, studying on some, uh, some fight tape for some of my fighters right now. Oh shit! Awesome, man. Uh, let's dig into that. So we've got Coach Randy Vera, with Austin Kickboxing Academy. I've actually I've met you before, man. I've actually gone in there and trained once, and it was at a point in my life where I wasn't making too much money, so I couldn't go back. But I'm looking forward to going back now that I got a better job. But talk to for people who don't know about Austin Kickboxing Academy, don't know Randy Vera. In a nutshell, what what's what, who are you? What are you? What does Austin Kickboxing Academy represent? We'll kind of go from there. Okay, so um, basically I'm originally from Corpus Christi. Uh, moved here about 15 years ago. Um, my first love was always Muay Thai, kickboxing, and just striking in general. When I came to Austin, I couldn't really find a, a striking program that for myself that really would fit. So I started training jiu jitsu, getting into you know basically what what my game as a mixed martial artist needed help with, and um, and I started teaching so that way I could get sparring partners and training partners for my fight, and um, it just basically you know just the standard that I always knew that I wanted for my training and what I was used to back home is uh, what I applied for my classes and. And it's just uh, progressed over the past 10 years or so since I started teaching my program into having Austin Kickboxing Academy and just try to have the, you know, it seems to be turning out to be the the best striking program in Austin and stuff, you know, from what people tell me and stuff, which is cool. But. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I had a really good time when I was over there, and uh, it wasn't my first time training either. Um but, uh, I, I, you know, as I've gotten into it more and more, would you say that Austin Kickboxing Academy, is it kind of overall, like, 
is it primarily one thing? Do you cover it like, you know, I, I know I've been inside the gym, but is it primarily one thing? Do y'all cover just boxing? Does it just kickboxing? Is it just one style of kickboxing? Do y'all do uh, more of like a Thai base or a Dutch base? Uh, kind of touch on that, man. That's actually a very good question. Um, I, you know, I'm not a super Thai traditionalist, but I have a strong appreciation for it. Um, when I first started training, it was kickboxing and kung fu. I had one instructor who did that. His name was Stacy Jurgensen, doing the weapon that hand. And my first instructor was really into this straight Muay Thai. So my style has always been a blend of, of each of both of those. And and I wanted to get better with kicks and stuff like that too when I was around 15 or 16. So I started doing Taekwondo around that time. So I got appreciation for that. <laughs> and um, you know, boxing. I love boxing as well because of the hands. And so that's kind of like how I try to put everything into context for what we have at our academy in terms of striking goes. Um, but that's why I like to use the general term kickboxing because it's we have a strong Muay Thai base, but we don't uh, we don't look past any of the other attributes like traditional boxing would offer, or even uh, tricky kicks that come from Taekwondo or Kung Fu or any other type of uh, striking martial art. We have an appreciation for the the, um, the practicality of the other striking arts as well, and so that's attracted people. Uh, our advanced students from other striking martial arts to contribute to our academy, and as well as uh, having ties coming to our school to do seminars and to you know help out our academy as well and help my style evolve as well. So I would say it's kind of like all inclusive, but our main program is my kickboxing program, and we have our awesome boxing coach Charles uh, Ezra Charles Adams. And, and that's his boxing program. And I also have a uh, kids mixed martial arts program as well. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Now, what are your, what do you prefer? Like you, I know you kind of touched on everything, but what do you, do you have a style that you used to prefer? I know you used to fight. I don't know if you ever used to do kickboxing, but, uh, you know, I even heard you had a fight with our buddy, uh, Nick Gonzalez back in the day, man. Well, what's kind of, what's kind of. <laughs> What's kind of your style that, that you prefer personally, you know, that you personally, like, when somebody asks you to train it, um, you know, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, that, that's my shit right there. Uh, kind of touch on that, man. I really like, um, I guess, the, uh, uh, a good way to describe would be to um, drop a few fighters' names that their styles that I really enjoy, um, I really love. Um, you know, Jose Aldo's uh, Muay Thai style when it's on, when, when it's on, you know. Um, Anderson, of course, in his heyday. Um, and then much more to like pedigree Muay Thai fighters and death kick boxers, Ernesto Hood. I love, I love oh, style. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Ernesto's a, his leg kicks, good God. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love the, the, the slick, uh, technical type type of strikers, you know, that just make them look beautiful, but they're also very very dangerous. You know, not very blocky, but they just play really well. You know, and make it look like an art. You know, <laughs> right? That's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, that's cool. That's real cool. Yeah. See, so he's like, I, I prefer. Um, and I was asking Nick about this, but like, I was like, I prefer like a uh, like a Dutch style because I can't really kick really high right now. I never really could, but I got a leg kick. Like I be, I watch Ernesto Hoos videos. I go back and watch a whole bunch of old shit. Just, just I like that shit too, man. I like Jose. He's got a, he's got a mean, nasty like hook, and le uh, right kick that he does. That left hook, right kick, that Dutchy. Oh my God, blows me. Away. Like things like that that you watch from fighters. Do you ever like watch fights? And is there a particular like thing that you notice that is lacking in like MMA? like a tool that's underutilized and you're like ah damn if only I got with them I could show them the right way do you ever do you ever feel like that man yeah I think that a lot of fighters nowadays uh, and, and mostly like in MMA you can kind of fall into like kind of a cookie cutter type of recipe and a lot of times there's I would say that what they're lacking in a lot is is, is uh, creativity yeah 
That's interesting. You know, uh, yeah, if you have like someone who's, I don't know, kind of, I don't want to use the word fail, but I think um, Conor McGregor said it best when we have when he talks about um, just how these guys get in there. They have someone just teach them like I don't know, quote unquote, kickboxing, and it's just straight, you know, uh, straight recipe, jab, cross hook, straight kickboxing. They say it's more time, but their their clinches are super weak. Um, it's just kind of. I don't know. I, I would say creativity is a big, big aspect, and just kind of not, not um, looking at the other, the other opportunities that present themselves in striking. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, no. Like, there's, there's athletes that are obviously more fluid than others that you notice. Like, perfect example is Conor McGregor. Perfect example is a John Jones. Like. Somebody, it just like kind of all comes together, and it's not blocky, it's not blotchy. You know, the kicks come together with the punches, come together with the takedown defense. Like it's all just one perfect motion that just kind of flows together, and it doesn't look, it doesn't look, you know, like too try hard or that like they really don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and the, the ties are very good about that. They stay real relaxed. They look for openings when they reveal themselves. They don't just um, just come in with. I mean, they're very basic, but they're just very. They keep an eye out for all opportunities, whether it's for their elbows, their knees, of course, the kicks and the punches as well. That's a good point, man. Yeah. Um, so, do you. Would you prefer, like, the, going back to the kickboxers that you watch, do you find yourself drawn more towards the Thai base again or more towards a Dutch style, like when you're just watching old fighters? Or just kind of like kind of like everybody? Do you kind of just kind of pick pieces from, like, a Ramon Deckers and Ernesto Hoost? Or do you kind of have a style more in your head that you, you like a little bit more when you go back and watch, like, a kickboxing fight, man? For me, personally, I would say... <laughs> that I like the fighters that utilize head movement. They utilize um, a lot of aggression. The ties, in, in terms of styles like Thai versus Dutch, I like the I I like both of them a lot for di- for the different the yeah, the different applications that each one offers. And what I like to do is try to create a I don't know maybe like the uh, what you could say is a balanced version uh-huh. that incorporates both styles. Interesting. Uh, I really like the ties. They're super strong. They tear everybody up that they go against. I mean, <laughs> it's just really hard to beat. And I and I think for myself lately, I've been finding myself um, getting into and studying a lot more of the the tie base as well. Like Bacall and stuff like that. Like Bacall's yeah. just a crazy, just crazy in every way. The tie base, you know, fighter again. I'm, again, I, I'm a I'm a super hardcore combat sports fan i'll probably throw names at you that you don't hear people who like don't go to your gym or like you know that don't really train like won't really know about but i mean all i do in my off time i watch fight footage i watch boxing i watch kickboxing i watch mma you know like you name it and that's what i do in my free time like some people go outside they you know go watch birds or i I watch fights you know what i mean (laughs) you know i love it i love the sport i love the game i i I mean i I like to think of myself as a true uh student of the student of the game if you will man so big i'm what i can do is immerse myself that you know depending on what kind of just grabs me is kind of immerse what i want to what i feel like studying and then once i kind of take from that style then what i try to do is go back and integrate it to the other the other aspect that I that I thought was very practical towards um, for my fighters, which are mostly predominantly MMA fighters. You do have uh, a great kickboxing champion on your hands, though, that I've seen and heard a lot of things locally. Um, Eric Pikachu is that? What am I saying? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's, he's an MMA fighter. Um, we haven't really gotten to get him a. You know, belt and kickboxing and Muay Thai right now because it's so it's it's not it's hardly that big in Texas. It's, it's not as big as we would like it to be, but right. I mean, for the most part, we have a 
Pikachu and, and uh, fighting MMA. And hey, what weight class is he at, man? For people who don't know, he's a 125er. Demetrius Johnson better watch his back. Is that what you're saying? Shit <laughs> is like the Matrix, man. Like you show him something, he he assimilates it. He's focused, and I mean, you know, everything that Jared with him, he just he just picks it right up. He's a sponge. He's got a lot of potential. That's awesome, man. How did you come to get drawn to MMA, man? Was it through like a martial arts, and then you kind of picked up on MMA, or were you just one of those people who like UFC came out and you're like, I'm all over this. This is my this is my shit right here. Like I'm all over this. I really. I've always, um, I mean, growing up, I, I'm, you know, like I mentioned before, I'm from South Texas. I always grew up, um, there was always fighting going around me, and I was always getting into fights and stuff like that. So the concept of, of you know, what combat is in terms of the least amount of rules and where the fight can go, I, granted, I mean, striking was always something I was intrigued with, and, um, but... Pretty much like Bruce Lee's philosophy is what what I've always kind of stepped in my in my, in my head. Like his book, The Top Jeep and Go, is really good. Um, describes just you know the appreciation for striking, for wrestling, for jujitsu. Even I mean, this is a book that was written in like the seventies, and and right. all of that is is you know, and so um, so I mean. I've always had an appreciation for the whole, for the whole puzzle, and I don't know, I mean, I, when I first competed, that was in 98, it was called Bad Art to Beat, it was one of Texas's first, uh, quote unquote, mixed martial arts, it was, uh, it wasn't even Pancrase, it was, there was another tournament called Dungal that was going on in Houston at the time, but this one was called Bad Art to Beat, and it was in Corpus, and it was, um, uh, Kind of like, back then it was like body duo, like, but you couldn't get to the head. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, no pads, no mouthpiece, no cup. What? None of that stuff was regulated. Oh, and my God. There, there were tournaments, so there was like, uh, this was a four-man tournament, and I beat the first, the first two guys, and then the last guy got caught in a, in a, in a neck cramp, and so... That taught me, it's like, man, I need to work on my ground game. You know, that's very important. So I just started, you know, being more receptive after that. But the whole time I've been in love with striking, but it was through that, those kinds of uh, experiences that taught me not to, not to overlook wrestling, not to overlook jiu-jitsu. Yeah. That's dope, man. Real quick, I know John's got a question for you, but before I give it to him, i got a question for you. As a coach, coming from a coach's standpoint, uh, what did you think of the Mayweather Pacquiao fight last weekend? See, because my nickname, Money Blakeweather, should tell you something, man. I'm a huge Mayweather fan, obviously. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I've watched every single one of his fights multiple times, and I have them saved somewhere. I, I can't say where legally, but I've got them saved. I, I love them. I watch them just sometimes. Just pop a Mayweather fight, get, you know, get some pizza, watch a Mayweather fight. Like, What did you think, though, as a coach of the strategy going into that fight. Uh, I don't know if you're, you know, really a boxing fan. I would guess you are, but what did you think of that fight? Maybe as a as a fan of boxing and then as a coach, what did you think of that fight, man? Well, as a fan first, uh, I would say that the fight went exactly the way everyone expected it to. Yep. And everyone was really upset because what everyone wanted was to be surprised. <laughs> Definitely. And that didn't happen. Yeah, we, we, all and then, wanted, we all wanted to see Pacquiao win. I mean, well, most of us did. We wanted to see an exciting fight. <laughs> I myself, yeah. I mean, it was it was entirely uh, predictable, kind of, uh, especially when it went into the later rounds. You, you knew it was going to uh, Mayweather for the win, so. Yeah. So, but, and then as a coach, you know, I mean, it was smart on, on Mayweather's part. He did what he was supposed to, stay on the outside when when Manny would get to the range that was good for him. I mean, uh, and whether it would mother him. So it was smart. Did you notice, like, the angles that he cut? Like, when he would get close to the ropes, he would just throw that 
that left hook and then cut out of that left angle and go around him. And Manny could never cut off the ring. And I mean, as a coach of of as a coach, did you just think about that and just I don't know who you were going for, but as a coach, do you think that like that would be something that you would teach your fighter to cut off the ring and not lose that angle because Pacquiao's done that against Marquez multiple times, and Marquez has, again, gotten off the ropes with that left hook, cut that left angle, and Pacquiao did not cut off the ring. I mean, how did, how did you, how do you feel? Like, like, I don't know how many times you've seen the fight. I've seen it at least three or four times. <laughs> not even going to lie, but, I mean, something like that, something as trivial as that, is that, is that as simple as me saying that, or is that more a fighter tendency? Is that more of a, a training tendency? You talking about cutting off the ring or using the angles to not get cut off? Both. Well, um, the, what I would say it's definitely an acquired skill, and the thing that pops in through my head comes from it's kind of like the thing that I've heard for jujitsu is basically, you know, if I drill this move more than you have drilled the counter. And I'm going to be sharper at it, you know, at my move than you're going to be at your move. If I've drilled it, you know, 100, you know, 200, 500 more times than you have um, with your with your, your counter or your move, that's going to go against that particular move. And Mayweather, his whole career is, is, is all about being slick and escaping and using those angles. So I would say, I mean, I mean, the proof's in the pudding. Mayweather did it. Obviously, he's drilled that way more than Pacquiao did. You know, you know, more than Pacquiao did cutting off the ring. <laughs> So yeah, I, w one of the things uh, this is J John speaking, by the way, um, that I you know I myself took from the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight was that uh, majority of the well fans that came out for that fight and sort of watching that fight, um, they're not so much uh, in love with the with boxing. It's more uh, the fighter or the spirit of the fighter and the person. Uh, I mean, because you see most of the arguments online, um, you know, people are kind of uh not scientific in their uh why they're exactly mad it's more about character you know that the mayweather put out there versus the actual um skill uh and the perfect strategy to win uh do, do, you, do you did you kind of notice that kind of influx on social media yeah for sure i mean there's way more of a vast majority of uneducated fans out there that that are just yeah. only looking for aggression, um, and and I guess product packaging and and hype and all that kind of stuff, rather than those that are students of the game and you know like that. So yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean uh, that's something like uh, me. Of course, I want to see Mayweather lose. I, you know, I thought Pacquiao was fa <laughs> was fast enough to like catch him and cut him off and actually make him fight. I w that that was my hope <laughs> even though i knew you know likely if it went to the later rounds you know it definitely was not going to go in his favor but uh you know i guess me personally i'm a casual fan i'm, I'm not a person that ever trained so yeah you call me a couch warrior but i just kind of I, I, I wanted to see uh, more of a i guess a fight or a dog fight kind of like how he does in his gym you know but you know it, he he knows he has a perfect plan to win and People like myself are just kind of, it's hard for us to, ex you know, accept that pill. But, yeah, I like, <laughs> I, I, it's, I like, I see people arguing all online about it. It's just kind of like pointless. So I'm just, I see, but I see both fights, but go ahead. It's not just, it's, it, it's not just regular, I guess, political fans. It, I mean, even, you know, not to say that even like, or the educated people, only ones that enjoy the fight. Like, no, no way. Like, even for myself. Like, I admit, I, I wanted Pacquiao to win as well, and I wanted to see a fight. I wanted to see him, you know, put, you know, put his heart and soul into that ring, and it didn't happen. So, I mean, even, you know, even professionals were disappointed, you know? 
Yeah, I, I, I per, I've, I've seen a lot of those tweets and a lot of the uh, reporters online making, you know, comments about that. I mean, even tonight, Darren, you know, before the fight, uh, Canelo that Canelo Kirkland, that, yeah. you know, they're talking about how this can be more of a fight, w which it was. It was great, <laughs> but everyone knows if you're going to fight like that, m you're most likely going to get knocked out a lot quicker. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you definitely, Mayweather has the best strategies thus far, but, um, oh yeah, I was going to say, um, uh, I had a friend that used to train at CTC. You remember that place? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's my roommate. Um, like he, uh, he said quite a bit of people went over to your, your gym. Is, is that true? Mm hmm You got a Tim Kennedy going there or he talks about it every now and again. I mean he's he's just all over the place. I mean right now he's in Argentina. Last time I saw he was like in Argentina diving or something like that. <laughs> uh I heard I heard he was doing some special forces shit. I heard he's a yeah, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, yeah, he's a character, man. I, I like that guy. Um, who are some of the people? Like, I, I, have, uh, I have uh, Andrew Craig that I'm getting ready for his July 15th fight. Uh, completely just overhauled his fighting style. Um, we've gotten down to, he was fighting at 185. We've gotten down to 170 now. Um, you know, this guy's getting uh, just a... Uh, you know, Austin Kickboxing Academy overhaul, man, and it's going to be a whole other guy when he gets in there. Just, I mean, if you see any of our other fighters, you know, it's a lot of, you know, technique, you know, good technical uh, fighters, but also uh, very aggressive trying to finish. You, you mentioned, you mentioned technique. We actually had Lindsey Marino on the you? podcast. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Randy, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hello? Okay. Yeah, I was saying you mentioned technique. We uh we had Lindsay Marino on the podcast and that was one of the things that she had mentioned was the technique. Is that something above and above and, and overall that you focus on? Yeah, um, even when I have beginners come into our academy, what I tell them is what we focus on is quality over quantity. And so the technique is is uh, the first and foremost Priority at our academy, yes. Nice. Followed by really serious conditioning as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. I know that firsthand. When I I went in for one of those free classes, man, and uh, uh, my conditioning was was pretty good. I mean, I didn't falter because I look around, I try to keep up with everybody, but like, man, it starts off just pretty intense John, John Miller has never been but I'm no. I'm looking at John Miller in his eyes right now and I'm telling him hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> going one day he's John Miller's going to drop by John Miller you <laughs> should drop by man uh, but yeah it, hey, what is getting nice and warm too it's really nice and I love it no AC I mean we don't have any central heating in there whatsoever I, I think that's perfect man I, tr I have a, a like a, a good setup in my garage like I have like mats I have a heavy bag I have a double end bag and actually I have a heater in there too and it's, I wear a sauna suit sometimes just to try and get that conditioning like because I think that you know I think that it takes a, a different level of beast like you can train at altitude all you want but until you train in like I think Texas heat man you, you <laughs> you'll never know what it's like like to just Try and beast out a workout, man. And so, um, yeah, man, that's, that's awesome, though. The conditioning is something you definitely focus on. What, as a coach, has been one of the things that you you think stands you out amongst, say, a lot of other coaches out there, man? Because, uh, I mean, you, you've got so many people out there that, that are trainers. and uh, What do you think? You know, stands out Randy Vera as as a coach man for for Austin, Texas. Um, what I try to do is just connect with everyone that comes to my academy. Um, I acknowledge that everyone, you know, has is going to have different tendencies towards different uh, styles, and what I mean by styles is 
you can be doing kickboxing and Muay Thai, but you may be more um, more apt to fight in a different way. You yeah. can't you can't make robots. So you know, I think just having an open mind, just like we discussed at the beginning of our conversation, having a, having an open mind towards uh, different different ways to apply the training, um, different you know you, you know working dead style, working uh, Thai style, and even blending in other aspects of the striking game. You know, I, I feel like that's a you know just having a, a nice good balance, open mind for that kind of thing. Maybe help, you know. <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah, I mean, I just, I all I do is do my best because I never, I never set off, I never intended to be a coach or an instructor. So once I started doing it, and people were coming to train me, I, you know, it's something that humbles me. And all I, all I try to do is my best for my students, and I'm just really grateful that to those that want to come train with me. And so, yeah, I just I just try my best every day, and I'm very thankful, you know. And I apply that attitude as well towards my towards my academy, towards my program, and the training that you know I put on to my students. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it sounds like you definitely have a, a positive head, you know. Uh, you know, training with training a lot of your your students, uh, but by any chance, like. Me for for me when I think of mixed martial arts I think of martial arts and when I think of martial arts I think of uh, you know hardcore training but also uh, it balanced out with uh, possible like meditation is is there any fighters that you know try to balance out the, both the physical with you know having a stable mind or at least a stable spirit Yeah I try to put emphasis on that to my students go to yoga to balance out the hard training. Um, for my fifth class, sometimes I'll have I'll have sit them down and teach them uh, meditation or take them through little mini meditation sessions just to instill that as well because I feel I feel strongly about that myself as well. Um, martial art is first and athlete, you know, I guess second, you know. Oh yeah, and you know everything uh, that an athlete does th- belief in themselves uh, and in their training that they went through is everything um, so you know like especially getting the, the spiritual aspect down uh, you, you definitely can create a warrior or a person that uh, can be like Diego Sanchez and just go out there yes! and like do the yes! impossible so <laughs> um, that, I mean that's a perfect example because like you said he does uh, yoga and you tell some of your, your you know your people to do yoga um yeah it's those kind of people that are scary those type of warriors that i think most of us you know really love to see yeah like he doesn't have the best technique or actually have a high fight iq god no i mean no like for real get him i know (laughs) but he's a warrior though that that's just one thing about diego sanchez especially when him and gilbert melendez went after it yeah, even him that. Like Guida, him and Diego, him and uh, Gilbert Melendez, him and anybody. Put him against anybody. Like it's fucking war. You know it's a fucking war, regardless. You know. Uh, who, speaking of like that, man, do you? I don't know. Do you? Do you have fighters like that that you like, or do you prefer fighting like that? Do you? Is that something you instill? Like you're about to go to war, just just do it, or do you try and just train everybody to be? I know. I know. As a coach, you want everybody to be safe, but. You see in the in the gym, there's some people who just do not, they don't have no regards, and you know they're gonna go. Yeah, they give no fucks, and they're gonna go out there and be a warrior. I mean, is that something? Do you go with that flow? Do you try and take them down the safe road? How do you, how would you treat a fighter like that if you had a Diego Sanchez in your camp? You know what I mean? I actually do have uh, this one fighter named uh, Josh Tabia, and uh, he has he fought in I believe two smokers, and he had his first. Muay Thai amateur debut um, sometime in the winter. I can't remember if it was December or January or something like that. But um, he has that kind of style. He's very forward. He doesn't he doesn't back up very much at all. So, like I said, you know, um, a lot of one thing that I learned is a um, a person's personality will determine the type of fighter that they're going to be. You have a matador style. You have a counter fighter style. You have a 
uh, what they call a bull. Um, and uh, so basically what you want to do is just have a, a good balance of each one of those if you can. But some, you know, everyone's going to have, based upon their, their personality traits, they're going to be more dominant in one particular area of those. And so I have a couple of bulls, and just what I try to do is train them to have a solid, uh, strong defense when they're coming in and uh, just, you know, feed into their, their their aggressive nature with good strategies so that way they can tear their opponents down. I mean, all my fighters, I try to make sure that they have a good bull style, but some of them have a whole lot more of that tendency than others. <laughs> Yeah, so what, I mean, I I know you're talking about the bull style, um, but you're 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 kind of think you're I guess it's more of a, a bull that likes to think. It sounds like you you know you like to uh, kind of uh, rein them in with their wild styles w when they go out there. Is that pretty much correct? What you're saying? Yeah, I mean they definitely have to be educated. I mean even the likes of Diego Sanchez, I mean as chaotic or even Clay Guida, as chaotic as their style their styles may be, they still have strategy to back it up. And if there's no type of fight IQ, um, you know, I can't allow them to represent my academy when they fight. So they, there still has to be some method to that madness, for sure. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I, I definitely feel you on that. Um, and one thing I think it's scary when I see, you know, for a certain style or personality is the Rory McDonald personality. That dude, uh, he you. scares the shit out of me. I don't know, like me... I don't know if you get that vibe off him. You look at him, and then you just feel like he can murder someone and get away with it. You know, like that's just kind of like persona. Yeah, I mean, do you, do you ever get that when you, you look at him? Roy McDonald. Yeah. He's a crazy motherfucker, dude. He's crazy as fuck. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. He's like a crazy, Canadian. like nerdy guy with nerd. really good skills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, I I think he he thinks of everything before you do. So like I don't I mean he makes people look like shit. Like I think he's a great fighter. Uh, I just I'm just scared of him. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. he's, he's thought of he, he didn't have like uh, American Psycho as a nickname or something. But he's well, actually he's from Canada, so I guess he's a Canadian, Canadian psycho. psycho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he thinks, man. He thinks. The psycho stink, dude. I don't know. Psycho so stink. I don't know, man. Does he have a nickname? Yeah, he changed it to uh, Aries, I think, or some shit. What? <laughs> he went from... He went from... Uh, what? He went from uh, Waterboy. He was uh, Rory the Waterboy. Hey hello? Okay, hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, yeah, he went He went from Rory the Waterboy to I think he was like God of War, like Rory God of War or some shit, and... Like Aries or some shit. I I don't know who he's gonna be next, but it's it's it, that look he gives you before you you die is almost too too much. Like that look he gave Tarek Zafferdine his last fight. <laughs> Tarek Zafferdine's soul left his body immediately right after that. I don't give a fuck what no one. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what no one says, dude. I mean that that shit's crazy. He he's a different like I don't. He's a thinker. He is a he's like a matador and a bull wrapped in one. And you have fighters yeah. like that 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 kind of have both. I don't know both kind of in them to do what they need to do to win a fight. Yeah. But speaking of Rory, let's get on the topic real quick. We got some championship fights coming up. Uh, as a coach, let's dive into some styles that we have. So let's let's dive into the like the the four main ones that we have coming up. We have. Uh, uh, Weidman uh, versus uh, Vito Belfort Buddy. We got Vito Belfort Buddy, the Buddy. Uh, we got <laughs> versus Buddy. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got uh, Vito versus Buddy. Uh, what do you think about that fight, man? As a coach, speaking of from an analytical standpoint, because I, I think besides myself, like besides me and you, probably uh, here, we probably watch a lot of film, probably study a lot of tactics. Break it down analytically as a coach, the way that you think, the way that you see the fight leading up to it, and the way you think maybe the fight would probably go. Um, well, I think that Weedman is just a tank right now. He's in his prime, and he's going to be, you know, just sticking and moving kind of like how he does, and he's just going to gradually tear down Vito. I mean, Vito is definitely not going to be on the juice, then it's going to be a different beat there. I mean, I mean, 
I don't know, I think he's going to break in mentally. Body. I wasn't on the juice body, I was uh, the TRT body. That's where I was, body. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I like to make pretend I can do it okay, Vitor. You tell me to shut up anytime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, 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 yeah, that's a good point, man. Do you think, how, how good of a coach do you think that Longo and Sarah teach Weidman? I, I think Longo's a fun, phenomenal coach. I, I yeah. think Sarah's a way more phenomenal coach than he was a fighter. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. I agree. Yeah, he's got a strong team behind him. Like, they got that boy Quinta, my boy Ali Quinta. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Those guys are great coaches. They're doing a really good job with Weidman. I mean, for Weidman. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. said Weidman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, then we got the uh, Anthony Johnson Daniel Cormier fight. What do you think about that one, dude? Like, you know, everybody expected the John Jones fight. We get Daniel Cormier versus versus Rumble Johnson. How do you how do you how do you have that fight played out? Like analytically, break them down, and and what do you how do you see that fight going, man? I mean, Johnson just seems like a man possessed right now at this new weight class. Um, I mean, Cormier. He's got strong wrestling. You know he's going to try to use that. But I think Johnson's going to be ready for it. And, I mean, man, nobody could put Chris Boston away like that. Yeah. And Johnson did. So, I mean. I I was disappointed yeah. on that fight. I, I thought, I, me, I, I wanted to see him fight John Jones again. Because I personally believe that John Jones he has a hard time with people his height are are, are t- taller because he has no leverage like did you yeah. see all those elbows he landed on him and it, he didn't really i mean he phased them kind of but not like what he did to everybody else but i don't know like yeah i was upset that he got you know you know gustafson lost but john jones really pissed me off <laughs> i'm sorry like he beat his own self and lost the belt. And I, I man, I was so pissed off to find out that you know they they were actually suspending him. I don't, I know I like I have no morals when it was coming to this fight. I I just wanted to see him fight Anthony Rumble Johnson. I was like, hey, he's not charged yet. They shouldn't do anything. But I don't know. Um, me, me uh, personally, don't get off topic. We're talking you know, about champions. We are. Oh, that's fucked up. Don't get up. on topic, John Miller. We're talking about champions. Let's do this, man. Yeah. Well. I, anyways, <laughs> with, with this fight, <laughs> I mean, I, I like, um, who who are you going for, or who are you seeing, uh, you know, come out with the win? Do you have a round? We were, by, that's by what I was talking about before you interrupted him. God damn it. <laughs> Whiteman, man, I see him putting out Vitor probably second, third round. Really. Yeah, oh, I mean, no. I think he's going to jack him up, man. I mean, Vitor is only doing badass because he was on a shitload of steroids. He was, no, <laughs> he was not on roids. He was on testosterone. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, I think in terms of uh, Johnson, I mean. Johnson Cormier, what, what do you think? He put out he put out Gustafson in the first round, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And then Cormier, did he, he went to decision right with uh, John Jones, or was he get put away? And no, he got he, a decision with John Jones, and he uh, definitely lost. <laughs> I wish my thinking for me is always a finish. So I'm I'm gonna say Johnson third round, just I don't know TKO, uppercut or something. Yeah, yeah TKO. Yep. I think so, too, man. I'm leaning that way. Okay, so after that, we've got, of course, I'm not even going to say Kane and Doom because I I think I I feel too strongly for Kane, and I've never really liked Doom, so we'll skip past that one. Uh, The next one one we'll go on to, though, is speaking of our boy, the crazy Canadian, we've got Rory McDonald uh, versus Robbie Lawler as a coach. Yeah, how did... um... Didn't Lawler put him away last time they fought? No. No, it was a decision. Was and Rory fought with a broken ankle. It was I don't think it was close. It was not close, John Miller. He won by like thirty to twenty seven, Robbie Lawler did. Oh, okay. Oh, no, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm that not crazy. Was a we lot can watch closer. that we can watch that fight that again. We got closer. my pass, bitch. He, Come on now. Robbie looked like shit in that man, fight. Talking to John. John <laughs> talking some shit, man. 
Uh, John, become a coach. You don't know shit. Dude, I'm telling you, you're like... <laughs> the ref helped him in that fight. I mean, did you, like, if, if the ref didn't stand up, Rory and Robbie Lawler, they that fight probably would have ended it differently. And, and, you know, the crazy Canadian would have won. He's crazy. Well, um, <laughs> I'm going for Robbie. I'm, I, I, yeah, yeah, I... I think Robbie. Okay, so how do you see this fight analytically as a coach? Do you see it going similar to the first way? Do you think, even though Rory had a broken ankle going into that first fight, that I didn't, yeah, I didn't know Rory had a broken ankle. So he didn't fight. The he thing that could fought like it. He definitely fought like it. He didn't move as well. But do you think yeah. that has any bearing, or do you think just you know Robbie has his number every time? I don't know, man, because Rory's pretty technical, and Robbie. Robbie likes to bang and just kind of go nuts, too. So that could be his downfall. And Rory could catch him in something. So I don't know. It, it, that, that one's a really hard one for me to call. It's 50-50 either way. Right. Right. Um, that's a good point. That's a good point, man. But, I mean, Robbie has gotten technical over the last two fights with Johnny Hendricks. I mean, and, and especially his fight that he had with Matt, Matt Brown. And, yeah, and uh, I mean, of course, he had the knockout of Jake Gellenberger. I, I think over those last four fights, man, he's definitely developed some technical skills to his name. He's no longer that that brawler that we we once brought. He was not he's not the bra brawler lawler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no for real. Right, check, check your lawler mode. Yeah, exactly. I think he's on a different level. I think he does really, really, really well um, coming up. Um, yeah, and since he beat Rory last time, I mean, he could be very well bust though in, in Rory's head is with his ass again. Yeah, yeah. Or or we see a Rory who studied with Varasa Hobby on how the fuck to, to, to break down somebody like uh, Robbie Lawler, and uh, we see a new champion. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We, uh, that's going to be a good... The whole card is good. Yeah. And speaking of the whole card is good, we're going to we're gonna end that card with my boy. My boy, Conor G. McGregor. My boy, Conor G. McGregor, coming in against Jose Aldo as a coach. How do you see this fight going? Going in, going into this fight, how do you see this fight going? Going into the fight, how do you see this fight as, as a coach? Analytically, man. Well... One thing that a lot of people don't know that I that I found out is that McGregor is actually a a boxing champion. Yeah, he's an amateur. So, he's an amateur boxing champion. He's got like a record in in yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he uses those kicks to just you know be real fancy and mesmerize his opponent. Um, one of my fighters, Dolly, actually pointed that out to me. And I was like, yeah, that's true. That does make sense. Like, he's just throwing all that stuff out there just to set up his cross. So, I don't know. I mean, he has a chance. I would say smart money's on Aldo. But I like McGregor. I mean, a lot of love him or hate him. I think I'm, you know, I'm, I think I'm leaning more towards McGregor in this fight right here. But, you know, Aldo will uh, dismantle him with his, you know, with a strong uh, Muay Thai style. You know his explosiveness. You, you, don't, or, you don't think that the fact that that McGregor Southpaw will throw off some of those leg kicks that Jose's so good for throwing? Yeah, he's a Southpaw and he's longer than Aldo. Right. And I mean that press conference. Did, I mean, <laughs> I mean, just from like straight up, you know, just he's just punching him, you know, like that. And so I don't know, he might be in Aldo's head too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you, did you see that embedded, the UFC embedded, like how much he was just talking shit to Jose and taking his belt and treating, yeah. him, treating him like a little girl? I know, like, I mean, man, that's got to mess with you a little bit. It would, it would mess with you, right? And you're Mexican, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I mean, he's the champion for a reason, man. So, I mean, you know, you got to have a strong mindset to hit that type of level, so... I say, I say he's been through too many wars. I say he's uh, that that last fight with Chad Mendez. I say Dwayne Bang exposed him, exposed a lot of openings, and left a blueprint for how to beat Jose if you're technical. Uh, yeah. uh, that's what I think. Uh, uh, how did you feel about that last fight with with Chad Mendez? I know you saw that one. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a really good match, man. And I think that you're right in terms of 
um, establishing a blueprint. And although being through a lot of wars already, so he is taking a lot of damage now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. John Miller said, who do you think hits harder? Chad Mendez or... McGregor. Chad Mendez or Con Conor G. McGregor. Yeah. Well, yeah, McGregor's got the, uh, the striking pedigree from his boxing. And um, Chad Mendez is a wrestler. So, uh, you know... That's it. Strongest part of his game, not his striking. You know what? That's interesting you say that because my brother does boxing. And he's done boxing since he was 16. And I've done MMA since I was... 20 and he's always told me that when he boxes MMA fighters it's they don't hit as hard as somebody who just trained boxing all their life at that same weight would hit him do you think that that when you just train striking I mean you you know you find things in front of your head and loose and you relax when you play your strike and a lot of MMA fighters, especially the ones that are grapplers first, whether it's a jiu-jitsu guy or a wrestler first, they cut a lot of tension in their strikes, thus making their strikes, um, I mean, I don't want to say weak, but weaker than, you know, someone who's, uh, you know, Primary who has a striker pedigree. Right. Yeah. Just like a striker transitioning to wrestling, they're not going to have, they're not going to be, you know, as strong as a wrestler as, you know, you got someone who grew up wrestling, you know? Right, right, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, I mean, that's a good point that you bring up, and that's what's something that I've always thought about. Because, like, I think, like, a lot of people talk about, well, bring a boxer into MMA and, you know, teach him, you know, da-da-da. Uh, but if you do, you know, I, I think that the hits that the boxer delivers, even if you teach him wrestling, like, I think those hits are just going to be just way harder for, for somebody in his weight class because he's done it for so long and, and done it just just way just way longer. He just knows how to do it. He just knows how to put power into those hits more than somebody who trained MMA or, or focused on something else would. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the, the body mechanic that it takes to, you know, that you have to cultivate, you know, and, and all that time, and digging into the heavy bag, you know, working on all the other attributes that it takes to develop a, a solid striking style. I mean, I mean, like, same goes for any other kind of uh, martial art, you know. If you dedicate it, you're going to have a lot, you're going to be a lot more, uh, you're going to be a lot more substantial for that practitioner. Absolutely right. Absolutely right, dude. I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I like that you point that out, though. I thought that was just a theory of mine, but you kind of, um, you're kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, re reinforcing, reinforcing my the thought that I had. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely, man. Reinforcing the thought that I had. Uh, real quick though, Randy, uh, we we have some time here. Um, we do a little thing with all of our guests called uh, random ass questions, and random ass random ass questions is a segment that we do, and we just ask you fifteen random ass questions. And uh, it could be anything like what's your dog's name or, you know, any, any, just any kind of shit. So uh, I'm going to ask you a question and uh, we're just kind of going to go from here. Uh, All right, sounds good. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. All right, first question. Uh, favorite rapper? Uh, MF Doom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him. I like him a lot. Uh, favorite sport? Favorite sport. Makes my shot. A good answer. Uh, dream job. What I'm doing now. I'm so jealous. Uh, favorite cartoon growing up. Popeye. That's a good answer. Celebrity crush. Ooh, celebrity crush. Ooh, no way. Um, I want to say Tom Hardy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> 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 I just watched uh, Avengers. Uh, what's her name? Black Widow. She's pretty hot. I like. Oh, her. Scarlett Johansson. Right God damn. John said that's his uh, wife. Or oh, that the girl that played uh, Catwoman. Holly Berry. Holly Berry. Which which Catwoman? You talking about? Oh, uh, Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Good old. Oh, 
John said he's going to MMA match you for Scarlett Johansson if you're ready. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, next, qu <laughs> next question. Uh, most famous person you've met? Um, uh, what's his name, Frodo? Frodo Kasbalayev? Frodo from uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, Elijah Wood. Oh, Elijah Wood. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. No, that's cool. I like, he lives in Austin, man. Does he come and train at AK? I, I wrapped his hands when he did, uh, Alamo Draft House does this thing once a year called, um, um, what is it called? Oh, man, it's been so long. Fun, fun, fun fest? Or no, Fantastic Fest. It's oh, called okay. Fantastic Fest. And, uh, so he, they, they bring out actors and stuff that come out and debate each other over certain, uh, Issues like yeah, it's like funny stuff like is George Lucas crazy, you know, and, and one person debates like the pros versus the cons, you know. That's kind of funny, man. Yeah, they they, they kind of like box it out at the end, and so Elijah Wood was one of the guests, so I got to wrap his hands for that. It was it was a trip. Yeah. That's pretty cool as fuck, man. That's cool. Uh, all right, favorite beer. Oh man, right now it has to be. Texas Honey Ale by the oh, yeah. Company. That's a good one, dude. I like that one. It's uh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Oprah, Martha Stewart, and Diane Sawyer. You got to bang, marry, and kill. Okay. I'll, I'll, Oprah, Martha Stewart, Diane Sawyer. I guess I'll bang Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I would marry Martha Stewart. And then, uh, you're gonna, ki you're gonna kill Diane Sawyer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, if your life is turned into a movie, who would play you? Um. Ooh. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> think, think about it. I don't know. Uh. I'm going to Tom Hardy. Yeah. Tom Hardy. <laughs> he can do a Vato accent. Do you think so? I think he could do it. <laughs> um, all right. Um, what food is your Achilles heel? Like, you know, you're not training. You're like, I hope nobody finds out about this shit. This shit's so good. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. I may have been craving donuts a lot. Ah, yeah, dude. Get some round rock donuts in your life, bro. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, pro weed or anti weed? Where do you stand? Bro, that's a good answer. Woo! Bob Sapp or James Thompson? Who could you fight off easier in a rape situation? Oh man, um, <laughs> man, <laughs> Thompson. What did you say? James Thompson, I don't want to, I don't want to, like, I don't want Bob Scott in my face. Man, after a minute, he just gassed out. You could fuck him up, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Hottest MMA fighter? Um, besides, b besides Nick Gonzalez. <laughs> Becky Simpson. She's a, she's a test to invest a few months ago. That's my wife. Oh, congratulations. I didn't even know you were married. Congratulations. Yeah. So what's your name? Smart answer. Uh, Santa Simpson. Sa Santa Simpson? Santa. Santa Simpson. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to look for that. Yeah, she, um, she, uh, she uh, annihilated Paulina Granado, broke her uh, undefeated record in Legacy uh, last year. And uh, now she's trying to Invicta. And she went to the Ultimate Fighter tryout, arm hard, one of the girls uh, that actually got selected. Because, you know, but uh, they didn't pick her. I mean, because she's not like a big shit doctor and stuff like that. So. Uh, well, fuck them, dude. Anyways. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, who's the ugliest MMA fighter? Ugliest? Um. Man, there's quite a few ugly ones out there. Oh, Bigfoot. <laughs> what was that? Bigfoot Silva. I, I said that. He an ugly motherfucker. His head looked like an Easter Island little, little zombie thing. 
Uh, all right, final question. Fallon Fox or Cyborg Santos, who has a bigger dick? <laughs> probably probably uh, Fallon Fox. Damn. Damn. She still got her dick. Cheating, <laughs> <laughs> man. up on girls. Come on, man. <laughs> she's, right, she's just choking with her dick. Uh, <laughs> I just want to be a girl, but, you know, I can't believe those boxing commissions let them fight. The who? The boxing commissions that are, you know, for those states. Oh, yeah, dude. They're, they're fucking up, dude, in, in Florida. Um, yeah. Well, that was 15 random-ass questions, man, and uh, I think you passed with flying colors, bro, bro. Uh, man, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's what I'm saying, man. We're here at the Loaded Joe's, man. We're all about breaking the monotony of, like, where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Where did you Where'd you go, Cotton Eye Joe? You know what I mean? Like, we do some different yeah. shit over here, you know what I'm saying? Like, we had on Roger, uh, uh, what's his name? Roger Navarez? Is that how I pronounce his name? Roger Narvaez. Narvaez. That's it. Yeah, I interviewed him yesterday, so he's going to be on the show too, man. He had nothing but good things to say. Yeah, he had nothing. His trainer. Who? My brother, uh, yeah, his name is Rudy Valenzuela. He, he took over the academy of my of our old boxing coach, uh, Weapons at Hand. So he's, he's training. He's uh, Roger's boxing coach. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got nothing but good things to say about Austin Kickboxing Academy, though, dude. Like he said, he, yeah, man, he's got positive things to say. So it's a small world, you know, I was telling him it's a small world, man. Like, you know, that everybody's just kind of connected, um, just kind of by the core things, you know, training and shit, man. So, yeah, Roger's an awesome dude. Yeah, man, he was super positive, man. Super, super good. And we, we gave him those, I gave him those 15 random ass questions, man. And he just, it really just breaks the monotony of everything and kind of, that's really what we do, man. We're we're loaded, Joe's. We we drink. We talk some shit about MMA, and uh, maybe we have some guests on. Who knows? You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man. That's uh, that's what we do here, man. But we definitely appreciate you appreciate you having you on here, uh, Randy. Uh, and and for those who don't know, how can people find Austin Kickboxing Academy, man? Um, we're on the East Cedar Chavez, Southeast Pleasant Valley, about five minutes from downtown Austin, on the east side. Uh, website is austinkickboxingacademy.com or akacx.com. Nice, very, very nice. And uh, just name off some some famous fighters who came in there. It's like tell tell everybody Mark Hunt, and John Jones came in. Who else came in, man? Say that again. I said name off some favorite famous famous people who came in there, man. Uh, just tell tell people that Mark Hunt and John Jones came in. Who else came in, man? Uh, from what? To our academy? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Any boos, boos of MMA have been there. I don't know. <laughs> No, yeah, it's great that uh, you're having all these uh, famous fighters over there. You know, pretty soon you're going to have... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of blanked out on that. Yeah, Dwayne Lidu came in through there. Um, what's the 135 captain you now? What's his name? TJ Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw was there. Danny Castillo. Close Tim Kennedy. Andrew Craig. Eve Edwards? Uh, Eve Edwards, of course. How could I, you know, actually said his name first. Bro, didn't didn't they train when they came to the UFC Austin? Yeah, yeah, some some of the well actually yeah, that's why right. oh uh um Justin Poirier was in there, Diego yeah. Ferreira came in through there, um the great sex on Tangier was in there. Um he was a make you know, multi fighter right back in the day. And then um yeah, another type champion named Compet. Another one that actually fought Manny Pacquiao long, long ago. His name was uh, Chai Chai. I can't ever say their last name, so. Yeah, nobody can say their last names. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, I've been pretty surprised at how many of these uh, people have gone through there. So it's pretty awesome, man. Pretty You're going to be even more impressed. Money Blakeweather and John Maddox from the uh, Loaded Joe's MMA podcast are going to come grace. We're going to come sign something in the gym. It's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, man, I I look forward. Is it is it okay? We come in, man. Have a have another look see in the gym, man. I definitely would like to come by. Yeah, go on in there, guys. I live there, so I'll be there whenever you guys uh, come on in. You there seven days a week, six days a week. Should we look out for you? Say Randy sent me. What's going on? I'm there Monday through Saturday. Okay. Yeah. 
Fantastic, man. Uh, and uh, do you have any sponsors, any fighters we should look out for, too, coming out of uh, Austin Kickboxing Academy, man? Yeah. Um, right now, Andrew Craig fighting July uh, 15th in San Diego. I'll be cornering him. He's going to be a whole new version of himself. Um, Daniel Jolly, the Werewolf of Texas. Oh, yeah. Man, up and coming, man. I mean, um, he's been with me for, me and Coach Charles for years, and uh, he's 5 0. He won a title in IFFA, I believe it's called. Um, yeah, he beat our buddy Matt Jones, man. I'm very familiar with Daniel Jolly. Yeah, it's funny because there's uh, that promotion, you know, uh, they never called him back after that. He knocked out a, a hometown favorite in Legacy as well um, in like a minute with a headshot. Goddamn. They ain't, they ain't called him back in like three years. I don't know. <laughs> Someone needs to step up and fight Daniel Jolly because he needs to get, get on that UFC part already. I mean, I mean, he ain't scared of nobody. It's time, you know, somebody needs to, need to step in front of him. You, then, you tell him to come on the Loaded Joe's MMA podcast. We'll find him a fight. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Do a fiver. We'll find him so, somewhere. And then my wife, Tessa Simpson, man, she's just, man, she's, she's going to burst off the scene. Just YouTube her fight against Paulina and Legacy. Well, I got fight pass. I got fight pass. Was she on the cyborg card? No, no, no. She, she fought in Legacy. And that was uh, last year in San Antonio. Well, she said she was Invicta, right? No, no, she got signed to Invicta. She hasn't fought. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah, her last fight was her last fight was in Legacy. Okay, cool. And then, yeah, and then, uh, oh, Lindsay Marino, of course, she's. Yep, that's our. Actually, at the end of this month, she's fighting a girl. Her name's KGB. She's fighting her in Louisiana. Andrea Lee. Yeah, we we know her. Yeah, she's fighting Andrea Lee. She's fighting her in Louisiana. Yeah, uh, she's going to fight her, and then, uh, of course, Pikachu, he's 3 and all as an amateur. Probably one more fight, I'm going to turn him pro, and we'll see hopefully the promotions won't be scared of letting him fight, too. Fuck yeah, Randy, we uh, definitely appreciate the time, man. I know you were uh, studying to uh, make sure everybody's going to fucking take it in the cage and uh, rip some heads off, so we definitely appreciate the, the time you took with us. Uh, we look forward to having you back on the show, and... Uh, I'll definitely drop by, man. Uh, if you're there Monday through Saturday, I've got Fridays off, so I'll just drop in and uh, say hi, see if I can't get a workout in or something, man. Yeah, awesome, man. Vice versa. You know, anytime, anytime you guys uh, on the show, is a lot of fun. And uh, you guys are always welcome. So I appreciate it, man. Anytime you got some, anytime you got some fighters, man, just shoot them my way. We'll blow them up, man. All right, yeah. I need to get Dan and Jolly on here. He needs to get on that. Please do. I, I've heard good things. I've heard good things about him, man. I've, I've definitely heard some good things. So, please do. Man, beat the beef. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. Like I've seen him with that fight, man. He's uh, he's he's a strong motherfucker. So, Randy, we definitely appreciate the time, man. Uh, we do. They want to wish you a great rest of the day, great rest of the weekend, and uh, uh, take care, brother. All right, thank you, guys. All right, peace, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude, that was Randy. My phone's about to die, too. I'm going to shit. But you know what? That was well worth it. Yeah, no. Nah, he's, he's a good guy. And we got the, we got the fight coming on. Uh, John, I got to go pee-pee. Tell the people what's going on with the fight that we got. Right after Randy Vera. Yeah, right now we got number five, Mark Hunt. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's about to throw down and knock some uh, Puerto Chingasso sense into somebody. But, uh, yeah, he's fighting. Uh, how do you say the... the Stipe Miocic. Stipe some shit i don't know but yeah uh, and he's uh, ranked number four so uh, uh 12 and 2 on his record so they're about to throw it down um you know it's hopefully going to be a slugfest and they don't neutralize each other because i'm i'm expecting a knockout what about you bud knockout. Knockout too? all right all right awesome yeah i'm i'm going for mark hunt i don't know i just that dude's just built to go to war anyway but um yeah other than that so you pick it for the second round i pick it for the third i yeah yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> but, but blake who do you got going in this fight i've got uh mark hunt i think he's gonna i think he's gonna take it uh easily it could go to steve Miocic because he's so athletic and uh, he can take a fucking punch, but I think he took too many fucking punches uh, from JDS the last fight. And uh, I just, I just think Mark Hunt is the um, should not be the underdog in this fight. 
So, look at that. Ooh, leg kick. Yeah. We're watching Mark Hunt, Stephen Miocic, UFC Fight Night 65. Ooh. Look at that, dude. Throwing that check left hook. It says, fuck you, motherfuckers, dude. Ooh, throwing body kicks. Who is this Mark Hunt? He went, he went training at Austin Kickboxing Academy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, get the oh, fuck oh, off oh. me. God damn. Oh, man. Yeah, he didn't want no part of that. Oh, all right. This shit is crazy. Mark Hunt finna, finna eat that ass, man. In the asshole. He don't get no fucks. Yeah, he needs to stay out. Work on the outside if he wants to be Mark Hunt. So we've had a lot in MMA news. John Jones been officially no longer the oh officially no longer the uh, the UFC light heavyweight champion. New fight coming up: Anthony Johnson, Daniel Cormier. Uh, then we had nothing. We had the Manny Pacquiao Mayweather fight. Of course, I'm, my nickname is still Money Blake Weather, so that tells you something, people. Uh, <laughs> um, Man, dude, just so much shit happening. Uh, we got the Mark Hunt fight today. Obviously, we have the Uriah Faber, Frankie Edgar fight next week. Ooh, Mark Hunt keeps landing this check left hook. Wait, did he hurt? Wait. Yeah, he kind of. He kind of did hurt. He kind of did hurt, stupid Miocic, dude. He better not. Stupid better not take this lightly. Um, then we just had Randy Vera, um, and um, you know. Uh, it, it, we, we've got Roger Navarez. We'll play his interview here in just a little bit. Uh, recently, it's been released that the UFC released the numbers for the uh, Reebok deal. Uh, not the best of numbers at all. Nope. Not the best of numbers at all, dude. Um, so, the, the, the fucking shit's fucked up, dude, for the fighters, I think, man. So fucked up. Like, why the fuck would we... Would they put 2,500... 2, for one to five fights, it was a five thousand six to ten fights. It's like ten thousand for eleven to fifteen. Six, you get twenty thousand sixteen to twenty, and then like forty thousand anything above or I don't know twenty thousand. Some bullshit, dude. Some bullshit numbers, anyways. Who gives a fuck, man? It forty thousand for champions and shit. Oh goddamn! Hang on. Might as well get a regular job. Fuck that shit. Right. <laughs> like, 2,500, uh, about time. After you get 21 fights, well, what does it go to, uh, 25 to 50 or something like that? No, it's, it's no cap. There's no cap. It just, it ends at like 20 or 21. You start to get like, I don't know, like 25,000 or 30,000 or some shit. It's, it's fucking retarded, dude. Like, this whole, f this whole system, the whole UFC deal is, is fucked with Reebok, dude. Like, get a new life. Like, Ro and Roger talks about in an interview that, I, that I'll play here in a second after we watch this fight, man. Uh-oh, he's eating mad elbow, but he's not going down. Matt, Matt, uh, Mark Hunt ain't going down, dude. Ain't no bitch. He ain't Hold no bitch. Hold him hurt. Are you going to go to Austin Kickboxing Academy or what, John I'm Miller? Go, yeah. I'm going to go on Friday. I'm going to go on my day off. I'm about that. It's been on my mind for like the past month. I'm going to go like all day, though. <laughs> I'm just spend like half a day over there and just learn some shit. Well, I have work. So. Oh fuck <laughs> you! <laughs> you can go on a Saturday. Uh, yeah, I, he's I there on Saturday. I rather get. I mean, I could go after I get off at two forty-five. Yeah. No deal. I, I might. I don't know if I'll be there or not. Um. But yeah, man, I'm excited to go check that out. And uh, yeah, what else? Look, he's trying to he's trying to own Mark Hunt. That's not gonna happen, dude. They better not. I'm trying to be cheap and make them stop the fight. Yeah, I don't like the Stephen Miocic character, dude. I've never really liked him. To be honest with you, dude. Ah, oh, I trying to go for Kamora like Fedor, dude. Mark Hunt knows what to he's do. He's back. He's back to. Yeah, he about to. Yeah, he about to yeah, get up. Yeah. yeah. He about to get up. It's about to be a short night for Stipe. Stipe better not let him. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Stupid computers. Oh, what corner I'm at? <laughs> if you're watching this, we're now uh, about 10 seconds into uh, the, the end the of yeah the break uh, between the rounds right now. Uh, I need to grab another beer. John Miller, hold down the fort. Hold down the fort. Shit. You see, fight night. Yeah, so anyways, so far I'm enjoying this fight. You know, my Mark Hunt, my boy was on his back. But, I mean, he was covering up. He was working. I think he was trying to, uh, you know, get the fight stopped by, you know, by throwing a lot of hits, you know, ground and pound. But uh, we all know that didn't work out. And he pretty much let, you know, Mark Hunt get a little rest. You know, get some energy behind him, and that's why his big ass got up, <laughs> and then the fight up on, uh, you know, ended the fight with the overhand right. So, yeah. <laughs> so right now I'm over here holding down the four, waiting for Money Blake Weather to get another brew because he's not smart enough to plan ahead and bring two. But right now it's round two, so we're about to see another epic fight. So right now, oh. Oh, just ate a jab, but it's all right. Mark Hunt comes forward, oh, as God. always. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, he's trying to utilize his boxing on Mark Hunt. Keep him on the outside. He didn't like that fucking last shot he ate. Is it me? I mean, Mark Hunt seems a little, a little off his game tonight. I'm, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Am I reading this wrong? Uh, he looks a little, uh, like he's been hit. He don't like it. He don't yeah. like getting hit. Yeah. It definitely fit, looks like that. But, ain't no thing. Ain't no thing. I still gotta pull from my boy. Yeah, he's still good. I'm just not used to seeing him back up. I am. He, he does back. Much. Yeah, he backs up a lot. But, like, it, it's because he draws you in to throw, throw, like, a right hand or uppercut. Ooh, Stipe with the elbow. Uh -oh. Stipe with the elbow, mad elbow. Hey, but last time, uh, was that Hunt th throwing elbows last time too? In the last fight, I believe he, was, he, he threw an elbow. Ah, oh, shit. All right, he got. Who he throw an elbow to? Um, he fought. No, he no no no. I think he did the Bigfoot. He threw an elbow to Bigfoot. Oh yeah, lots of elbows to Bigfoot. Yeah. Okay. Lots of fucking uh, elbows to Bigfoot. Uh, all right, break them up, ref. Send them up. Yeah. Send them up. <laughs> ah, no, mommy. <laughs> Dude, this fight is going oh, not the way I expected, but I mean, kind of. I mean, I expected Stipe to use his athleticism, try and tire out Mark Hunt, but not like this. Not in Australia. Don't do don't do him like that. At least right. just take a hit in the chin. <laughs> right. <laughs> just one. Just take like one or two. Yeah. It'll be fun. You go to sleep. <laughs> uh, man, dude, this fucking fight. All right, all right, he's up. He's up. Fuck yeah. But Mark right. Hunt lands just one, dude. All it takes is one. Keep it with them elbows, though. Landing mad. Mad jabs and elbows. Look at that. Ooh. Right elbow. Ooh. 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 Hunt. I'm feeling oh, bad boy. for Hunt now. That was a hard shot right there. I still think Mark Hunt's always got that, that one punch that can come from anywhere, though, dude. Yeah, no, he does. Ooh, like that. Yeah. Come on, Hunt. It's like when you roll the dice and you need you like a five. You can almost get it. You got a four. You get a, a six. You're like, damn, I just need a five. That's what going for Mark Hunt's like sometimes. Come on, Mark Hunt. Oh, oh, that elbow, dude. Fuck. Hey, that Steve Abiyoch is trying to home for that right elbow. Yeah. With, his, with his dirty tramp stamp on his back. <laughs> trying to be like Conor McGregor. Look at that shit with wings <laughs> on top. <laughs> The reverse the Conor McGregor <laughs> with, that, with that tattoo on his back and shit. Fucking fight, dude. Oh, man. Come on, Mark. Oh, 
Just be a Samoan for like super Samoan. He just needs to throw that right, dude. Trying to grind him against the cage. Mm. Fuck out of here. Uh, it looks like he's going to... I don't know. It looks like this is probably going to be the story for the rest of the fight. I hope not, dude. I hope Stupe gets hit. He's mixing, he's mixing it up really well. Yeah, he is. Fuck. Uh, God damn, Mark Hunt's takedown defense is legit. I'm Mark Hunt. God damn, Mark Hunt. Come on, man. Get off the gate. Get off the gas. Come on. Hit the gas. More like <laughs> I, can't hit I was talking to Steve Bay. I was telling him not oh. to hit the gas no more. <laughs> Don't hit our boy no more. Oh! Oh! oh. I mean, I think he still lost that round, but... Well, fuck it, he ended it with, like, these two strong Super Samoan hits. <laughs> uh, I don't think Steve ever been knocked out right. That's how he lost to Stefan Struve. It was like TKO. Oh, wow. He got hit with one. He was just like... Oh, wow. So, there's a... Accumulation. Two a chance, uh, yeah. I, it's like one round hunt, one round Stipe, maybe. Steve have been trying to outwork him. Oh no, it just depends on how you see that, that first round. That hurt. Whew. Steve have been landing in hits all this round though. Yeah. There's no Couldn't take him out like for Visa Bear Doom though. No. He tried. Steve He's been <laughs> watching tape, we know. <laughs> we can tell you've been watching tape. We know what's left, Steve. He's smart. If Mark Hunt loses, I challenge Stipe to a fight. God. God. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm recording this. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Stipe, don't find me. How tall is he? He's like 6'4". Six, six, oh, Stipe? Stipe is 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, six, yeah. Mark Hunt's 5'10". Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If that, maybe, on a good day, he's 5'10". Oh, whoa. That, uh, that, that lead hook, that, he, that leaping left hook. Ah, oh, oh, okay. with the takedown. That's dirty. Uh, I mean, he's doing what he has to win. <laughs> I like if he, he's dumb. He'll never, be, he'll never fight like a champion. Blake, <laughs> we know people that you like that don't fight like champions. They fight to win. No start, dude. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, he'll never be. He'll never be a champion. I'm not saying it's because he fights like this. I'm just saying he doesn't. You can't get past JDS. He'll never be a champion. Yeah. I mean, Verbisa Red Noom got got never got past him, and he's still a, technically a, a kind of a champion. But I mean, if that's the the gatekeeper, then you ain't getting past him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh. Come on, bro. Come on. Fucking steep Miocic with this. Cause it's cause you're not in here, bud. Producer Bud, just chilling. Don't even care about if this his boy Mark loses. Hunt, this is why Mark Hunt's losing, cause producer Uncle Bud was not watching the fight with us. What the fuck, Bud? Go rub one of the the pieces that you have, man. Maybe he'll. Good win. luck. Yeah, get good some luck. good luck. He still got three minutes. And 15 seconds Three left. Three fucking minutes, man. <laughs> this is how long this round feels like it's been going for eight minutes already. Ooh, oh, oh shit. Ooh, oh, man. God damn it, Mark Hunt's eating some elbows. Fuck it. Oh, oh. Man, man, don't be done. No, come on. You think? I don't know, man. Stipe is doing what doing what he needs to do to win. 
He's throwing punches. They're not really doing too much damage right now. No, they're not. If Mark Hunt gets up. Come on, Hunt. Come on. You got it? He could do it. I know he could do it. Right? Oh, damn, he is bleeding. Probably from his nose. He's been blocking those punches with his face. Just because you got a hand that doesn't mean you're blocking it. Oh, that's not good. Oh, shit. Yeah. Come on, Hunt. Oh, come on. Nah, he's smart. He's smart. Fuck. God damn it, dude. He's not knocked out. He's still he's still defending though. So he threw a punch. Yeah, he just took 17 hits to the face in a row. Yeah, it's done, dude. It's, over. it's gonna be done. The ref hasn't called it because Mark Hunt keeps throwing punches to Stephen Miocic's face from the bottom, but he's getting eaten like a thousand hundred punches. Come on, Hunt! Dude, if Mark Hunt can make it out of this round, I think he can win. You don't he's, think so? Uh, he's probably out punched. The other guy might be out punched. Stipe might be a little bit tired from throwing 100,000 punches. And not being able to knock his ass out. Oh, no. Mark Hunt's still in the game. Got an arm pin, though. Oh no! He's getting up! He's getting up! There he goes! He's getting up! 15 seconds left, the third round. Mark Hunt's trying to get up. He's been eating mad punches for the whole, like, the last three minutes. Yeah, he made it. He made it. If I was Mark Hunt, I'd just hit Stipe right there. <laughs> He's in Australia, dude. They're not going to call off an event in Australia. They don't have many over there. Yeah, we don't want your main fucking badass to be beaten stupid. They don't give a fuck. They'd rather see him go out on a stretcher dying. They want to see him knocked out. They yeah, wanna... they'd rather see him knocked completely out than for him to just call it off and he's still standing up. Uh, come on, Hunt. Fuck. Hunt's got a bruise under his eyes. Got a cut on his face. Somewhere, I don't see the fuck. Yeah, he. Fuck. That wrestling. It's because his hands were both up. Like, usually it, he fights with his hands down so he can. Oh, yeah. Dropping them bows in different area codes. Then went for the level change, took him down again. Come on, Hunt. Breathe in Jesus. His, his eye, dude, his right eye looks about ready to close. <laughs> Stipe, just take a hit. Be a man. Take a hit from Mark Hunt. Please, you know that's gonna happen. <laughs> Please, Steve, for the love of Jesus, don't take Mark Hunt down again. You see what I There he goes. God damn. Yeah. It's gonna look like Luke Rocco versus Leo de Machida. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they're booing because they don't want their guy to lose. Yep. Yeah. Smart. Disrupt, disrupt his breathing. Oh man, this fight. Mark Hunt. It's uh, four minutes into the fourth round. Four minutes exactly right now. 
Um, it's oh yeah yeah yeah. It's one minute in, but uh, it's 3:53, 3:52, 3:51 on the clock. Uh, eating punches from Stipe Miocic unanswered. Stipe is in top half guard. This this fight is looking just dirtier and dirtier by the minute, man. And every round it goes into uh, that I want Mark Hunt to win. He's losing. Um, this is so sad. Hate seeing my boy lose. Hate seeing my boy lose. Uh, if we don't stop this soon, we're just going to hop in an interview with Roger. Because uh, this shit is bullshit. Yeah, we might just hop in the interview with Roger Narvaez because this shit is, this shit is too dumb. I can't, I don't want to witness my boy Mark Hunt go out like this. John Miller, I like your shirt. It says Avengers Assemble. And he, and, and John Miller got Hulk arms coming at them shits. He's been working out, taking some Mexican supplements and shit. Yeah, that's right. He's been taking what Hector Lombard takes and shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, going into a good fight, though. John Miller, how do you feel about our guest Randy tonight, man? Uh, he's, he, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't expect to have an expectance of what I expected of a coach from AKA. I don't know, like, for me, he sounded really young, young but yet, really young, yeah. yeah, really knowledgeable and actually adaptable when it came to actually training his fighters instead of like being strictly like karate or muay thai like he actually wants to implement a whole lot like a just become the melting pot but he definitely uh talked about quite a bit of styles that he's been looking at so i don't know that bring that brings a lot of great promise you know because I think when I think of uh, Austin um, Kickboxing Academy, I think of it more a little bit limited in what they teach. But right now, he pretty much proved that wrong and threw that shit out the window. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I've spoken with him before, but not like this. I mean, obviously, I didn't have a podcast when I I went to go train in the first time uh, at, at at there. But he was just a really nice guy and and really uh oh uh really tried to be as humble as he could and 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 he gave everybody just positive feedback he's a really positive person to be around in the gym man uh to be quite honest with you from what i remember i really like training in his gym um so i i was i was really glad uh we got him on and 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 i ideally expected what happened uh w with this interview um i really really enjoyed it i really liked it um And I, I was really, um, I don't know, I was really excited uh, to have him on anyways. Um, what did you think about some of the stuff he had to say about, like, the fights and stuff and, and, and analyzing? Did you did you like his perspective? Yeah, personally, I mean, I, I, I felt that he saw through the eyes of both, per, like, both people that were, like, like fans. Ca yeah, fans compared to people that are like obsessive, like your bitch ass Blake. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyways, like now nah, I like I mean he's definitely an open mind type of guy that likes to see things from different angles. Which um, I mean he really did present that very well in his interview, especially um, how he likes to come at you know the, the different fighters and how he's recognized a certain type so that he can mold them. And to actually, uh, you know, thinking and, you know, going ham at the same time. I mean, what, what would you feel about him when, when he, you know, he talked about his pupils uh, that were more bull style versus, you know, some that are more te technical? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I've never seen him fight. I'd have to see some of these, these bullfighters fight because, you know, you, you think you have a high expectation when you see somebody like a Gilbert Melendez or like a Diego Sanchez or Clay Guida, you have a high expectation. Will it meet that when you see that person fighting? I mean, I'm not saying that, not knocking talent. Never seen them fight, so you have to, you'd have to gauge them. Are they between this level and that level of a bullfighter? Are they as reckless? Do they, they show a bit more 
hesitation because of the intelligence that they uh, of the position that they're in. Um, I'm sure that they focus on that. I'm sure they they think that, and I'm sure Randy would not let somebody come out of his gym and just fucking with reckless abandon try and right exactly. It's his name on the line, you know. It's AKA's name on the line. Um, and when I say AKA, I don't mean the gym that injured Khabib. I mean Austin <laughs> Kickbox Academy. <laughs> oh, Habib and Armagomedov no longer fighting. Donald Cerrone, uh, we might as well just turn this fight off, dude. Stephen Miocic is gonna win by decision. He's a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> I mean, he has a good, you know, blueprint. So he's got a good blueprint on how to beat Mark Hunt. Uh, yeah, but what did you what did you think about everything that 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 he had to say as far as the analytic? We've never had a coach, and I'm not a coach, but I I have a lot large amount of analysis. That I've that I've seen that that I work at that 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 I mean I don't I don't feel like a coach but I, I watch a lot of videos on on breakdowns I watch a lot of I, I try to teach myself my own shit I try and help you know I'm helping Jordan you know get his hands right like how did you feel having an analysis of just fighters he didn't go too in depth but like just pointing out shit that you know that we don't normally talk about how did you feel that like having that other sp- perspective of like a coach on the on the show man actually i mean I, it was a very uh a different change cuz i know lately we've been just having fighters uh, on and you know it, the one of the biggest parts as we have seen tonight when it came to Kirkland is the coach and their training yeah. camp before the fight has such an effect on not only the psyche but the ability for the reaction time of the fighter and how to implement their strategy to you know win i mean i personally just feel that uh we might as well get more in touch with coaches because they actually know the fighters not only on like how they perceive themselves to us but more on like you know training and um you know i i just find the perspective very helpful for people that are wanting to uh join mma or possibly uh see what kind of school is you know best for them or their mentality i think i think it's really good for just people who want to learn like about sport man like you got like a lot of fighters who just like I don't know, you have a lot of fighters, you have a lot of fans, and I don't think they take the extra fucking perspective to just, like, kind of think, like, there's another perspective outside of that. There's the fucking coach's perspective. Right, dude, dude, and it it goes into a a fighter's psyche. Uh, They're about to call this Mark Hunt, Stephen Miocic's fight. God damn it, Mark Hunt. Oh, just dye your hair black, because this fight's dead. Uh, (laughs) Oh, they fucking called it. God damn. Fuck. Fuck. This fucking fight. He didn't fucking knock him out, though. He didn't knock him out. He just outworked him. Yeah. What happened is what I didn't want to happen. God damn it, Stephen Miocic. Let's let's just move on to our interview with... uh, Where's where's the remote for this TV? Can you grab that remote over there, John Miller? Um, We're just going to move on from this point right now. To our interview with uh, uh, Roger Narv- Narvaez, um, really nice guy. I got a chance to speak with him yesterday, and uh, yeah, here goes the interview. And we're back again, man. It's your boy uh, Money Blake Weather over here with uh, Texas uh, Texas own Roger Narvaez. Roger, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great, brother. Doing great. Fantastic, dude. Fantastic. Um, well, glad to hear everything's going good, man. Um, so let's just kind of hop right into it, man. I think I caught you at a good time today or this week at least. I seen a, a couple articles posted about some tweets you had uh, going on about this whole Reebok deal, man. Um, I'm not a fighter. I wasn't too happy about it. And by the look of your tweets, man, I could see that. You weren't too happy about it, man. Uh, when did you find out about this? Did you find out about it, like, through the rest of, like, everybody or, like, before, ahead of time of the media? You know, uh, we had been, this whole Reebok deal had been, uh, 
talked about for months and months. And uh, in fact, at, at the, all the UFC fights, you know, UFC is doing a good job of, of uh, letting everybody know how it's going to run. Uh, of course, anybody is, was very, very uh, uh, concerned about it because we all, uh, 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 you know, and I see you know, the lower tier finance, you know, a lot, a lot of the money that, that is made is, is off our sponsorships. And I, I personally depend pretty heavily on on sponsorships. So I was a little nervous to see how much we would get paid, but I, I, I kept an open mind to it. Um, so, yeah, when, when I heard how much... Uh, we were going to be getting paid by Reebok. It was, uh, it was, it was a little depressing, man. To, to, to be quite frank with you, you know, it, it's uh, a fighter like me. Um, you know, I try to put my own money into my camps, uh, into traveling, supplements, bringing training partners down, paying coaches, doing whatever I got to do so that I, I'm successful on fight night. And uh, sometimes I can run anywhere from two to five thousand dollars a camp. You know, it, it, it can get pretty uh, pricey. Um, so I spent heavily on sponsorships, and uh, fortunately enough, I've been very blessed to have a lot of uh, support and uh, local sponsors that have really chipped in. Um, you know, so so when I saw the Reebok deal, it it, it was definitely a, a blow. Um, you know, I I think uh, I don't want to get too much into detail. Right, right. But uh, I think I put something on my tweet like uh, you know. To, Twenty five hundred, and I made more than that off of one sponsor last night. Right, and uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not bagging anybody. I'm not dogging anybody. I'm just stating facts. You know, I'm, I'm not saying Reebok sucks. I mean, they got great quality equipment. I see UFC's vision and where they're trying to go with with this whole deal. Um, but you know, a guy like me uh, who depends heavily on the sponsorships, uh, you know, they're they're basically making money off of the table by by. Uh, put this this Reebok deal into effect. Um, right. You know, in, in my case, uh, anywhere from ten to, to fifteen grand a fight. God so damn. So money like that is is uh, you know thankfully I'm a firefighter uh, as well. So you know it's not like my family's gonna you know go poor, but but definitely you know we fight. I fight to to give my family a better life and. and you know, finances have anything to do with that. Right. So when, when uh, you know, that deal came out, you know, of course I was a little upset. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident the UFC, it's, it's hard. Uh, you know, I'm definitely, the UFC is the best organization in the world to uh, fight for. It's always been a deal of mine. So I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon of, of dog and UFC. I just think that, uh, you know, hopefully something will be done to compensate the fighters. Uh, if this doesn't wash out, and, and I give uh, I give them full respect that they'll they'll do everything in power to try and uh, know those kind of situations. You know? Right? Do you think like optimistically? I mean, you see that Monster signed, you know, Conor McGregor to you know a sponsorship deal, but the whole deal is, you know, why would they sign him on if in July it's just going to be they can't they can't you know be signed to him? So does that give you a little yeah, optimism well, well, that that Monster's going to be? From the way I understand it, these guys uh, that got signed, you know, Gage Van Zandt, Conor McGregor, you know, all the, all the, the, the Reebok signees, um, they're getting paid under a different contract. Right. You know, so, so uh, I know they were saying, you know, like Conor McGregor, for instance, he's only got five or six fights with UFC, but he certainly isn't going to fall under that, you know, uh, or let me very straight that all the of them fall under that, you know, Six to ten fight contract. Right. Uh, get paid, uh, you know, five thousand dollars in sponsorship. He's got a totally different sponsorship deal with Reebok, so he's he's going to be making out pretty good still. Um, you know, and the, the fighters that it hurts are guys like Demetrius Johnson, who, you know, I mean, had the chance he was getting sponsored by Xbox, and now you know he's not no longer going to be able to have that. And uh, for a guy like that, that's you know, I, that, I mean, he just proved again he's the best fighter in his weight class. You know, last week in the week before, uh, I forget when, when yeah. the fight was, but, uh, you know, he, he had a dominating performance, and, and a guy like that surgery making a lot of money. Um, Reebok might not see him as a very marketable guy and what they're looking for, uh, so well, that, that's going to definitely take some, some big money off of the table. You know, right. But, uh, I, I think I was trying to point to the fact that, like, maybe Monster would be joining in as a sponsor as well 
along with Reebok, you know what I mean? Because that's kind of word that I've heard bouncing off, like, I'm not media or anything like that. That's just kind of what I heard, like, on different, you, you know, MMA podcasts and stuff. So if, if does that give you any optimism that if they're signing one fighter, they'll do another, and then they'll be on the table to be like, it's UFC, it's uh, Reebok and Monster, you know what I mean? Right, right. You know, as far as that goes, man, I, I guess what it comes down to, they're going to, you know, sign whatever they feel is more marketable. Uh, how many more people they're going to pick up or, or what they're going to do. You know, this is in the infancy of, of the first, I mean, we haven't even had a card where we actually see how everything turns out. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. So it's a little hard. I, I'm one of those guys where I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt and, um, you know, with that being said, it, it, it's hard to see the future with this. You know, I've been in talks with, talks with my manager personally. I got a great management team in it with the Iridium Smith Agency. And, uh, you know, we're looking at other ways to try and bring some sponsorship opportunities in. Um, and, and, you know, because see that's one thing they're saying. They're not saying you can't have sponsors. They're just saying fight week, fight night. We're not allowed to uh, really... Um, where anybody else except Reebok. Okay. That's an exclusive sponsorship deal. So I can still have my local sponsors. The hard part is pitching to my local sponsors and saying, hey guys, I can offer you, you know, I still want you to pay me what you're going to pay me, but I'm not going to be able to quite offer you the same type of exposure. So that's where it, it really makes it a little more difficult on the fighter in trying to have to figure out what's going to work for, uh, you know, for those sponsors that we've kept. Right, so, right, exactly, exactly. I see what you mean. I mean, I'm not a fighter, but I see the direction what you're saying. It's kind of a harder sell to be like, well, you can't be on fight week, which is primarily where they want to be at. So, right. you know, I, I got a lot of sponsors that, you know, really just, you know, they do it because uh, they believe in me. You know, I'm really not that big of a sponsor, but I really just, you know, really just, you know, and I've got to step it up on my end and try to figure out, okay, how else can I get these guys out there, you know? Right. And that's why I'm pretty active on social media. I'm pretty active with, um, you know, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook. And, and I, I'm in touch with thousands of people like that. And those people are in with thousands of other people. And it's just, you know, a, 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 a downhill effect. So, so hopefully, um, you know, thank God for social media, especially with this stream out deal. You know, because it's definitely going to still allow us to reach a lot of people uh, out there for our sponsors. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess optimism is the best way to be at this point. It is a bit, I'm sure, nerve-wracking. I'm not a fighter, but, I mean, I see the numbers. It's a little bit nerve-wracking at first, but I guess only time will tell, you know, how, how good or, you know, what the UFC will do to try and compensate up for that the rest of the money. But I guess let's hop off of the... The what's in right now, and let's let's focus on you, man. Uh, your last fight was an incredible, uh, at least I thought an incredible fight with Elias Theodoro. Uh, you didn't end up, you know, on on the good right side of that one, but to me, uh, he, I was blown away by the performance. The first round, I I gave it to you. I I gave yeah, not a problem, man. I gave you the first round. The second round broke your arm. Uh, what what point do you remember? What point you broke your arm? Can you want to let me walk us through that fight, man? I've really I went back to watch that fight like two times last night. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it just that much. I saw a lot of like great stuff out of you. Can you kind of walk us through maybe like going into that fight? You know, did you yeah. feel like an underdog in that fight? What was that? So did you feel like an underdog in that fight, or did you feel like you kind of had a grasp on Elias? I'm always going to be the underdog, man. I, I realize that. Um, you know, I'm not the guy that's uh, kind of world renowned or keep up your test show. Um, I really got a, a good break. And I, like I said, I have a great management team. Uh, thankfully, Joe Silva, uh, you know, uh, gave me a chance in there. And then, uh, you know, I got another big shot against Luke Barnett, which, you know, I won that fight. Right. And so I, I'm going to be the underdog. This guy was. You know, the, the number one prospect at 185 out of out of Canada. He went through the show. He's real popular, you know, worldwide. So, um, you know, I, 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 I enjoy that role. I don't mind it at all. Um, 
But going into that fight, I was very confident. I watched I watched his striking, uh, not taking anything away from him. He's, he's one tough tough dude, but his striking, uh, what, which it's funny because he mentioned my striking was a little uh, rudimentary, but his is actually I felt the same way. I thought he he had big looping shots, big big kicks, but but you could, you know they were very telegraphed. Right, right. Going into the fight, we're we're very confident. One thing he did have was big cardio which we prepared for, and he was a bigger, stronger middleweight, um, you know, uh, than, than your average. So, you know, that's what we were preparing for. Um, first round, you know, from what I can remember, man, he went in there and he tried to push me against the cage, and, and I just... Man, you got off of that cage. <laughs> you got off of that cage fast, dude. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, man. He, he tried to keep me there, but, you know, he did a good job for about, like, 10 seconds, and then and what I remember from getting off and feeling his strength and his weight and I mean he said he was weighing 217 fight night and I was about 210 and uh, really I didn't feel any of his strength or power you know right. uh, uh, being pressed against the cage and uh, so when, when he did that I was kind of like alright you know cool I got off pretty easily and then like I said all his shots were very very telegraphed I could see everything coming and I was just mainly countering him and I kept ca- cracking him with the right hook that right hook that yeah down. that right hook uh, you uh, caught him like uh, so many times man with that right hook man I was I was impressed yeah, thoroughly yeah. well he kept, he kept loading up I feel like he hit his face he was just like like making this ugly face right about every time he was going to try to punch me so you know, <laughs> I, I could see it coming and I just stayed back and threw that hook uh, you know, one regret I do have about that fight is I should have been a little more aggressive, you know, lesson learned. If there's anything to take away from that fight, it's, it's that. Um, I feel like I could have dominated him if I would have just taken the center and not backed off. Um, you know, second round came out. Uh, we felt good after the first round, but I felt like I was being a little hesitant. So I came out in the second round trying to be a little more aggressive, and that's actually how he got the first he got that takedown on you. Yeah, he got the takedown. Yeah. He, I overcommitted, and he just basically, you know, took me down with a, a, a little single or double leg, I believe. And then, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm comfortable on the ground. So as soon as he hit the ground, I started transitioning, working my jiu-jitsu. He caught me with a little elbow that kind of busted up my nose. Your nose, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was it. But, but like I said, I was able to get up pretty easily. Uh, he didn't throw a really strong... Uh, you know, uh, it, I trained with a lot of big guys and a lot of big, strong guys. So one thing that it... was on top of, he definitely wasn't as, as, he wasn't as powerful as I had thought he was going to be. Uh, so that was that was good. And then, you know, leading up to, to where he broke my arm, you know, I used my hands a lot. I, I'm a tall, lanky guy. Right, right. I was basically just fading away as he was coming in with those kicks. And, man, he just hit it in the right spot. Um, when you look at the x-ray, it's, it's, he didn't break it. He didn't hit it right in the middle. You know, the thick part of his shin just hit the, the thin part of my, my uh, upper forearm. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, it broke my ulnar. And ah, I, yeah. felt it, I felt it break. I thought it was like maybe I dislocated it or, or something happened, got loose in there. So I kept fighting. And then he kicked again because, like I said, I didn't know it was broken. I thought it was maybe just dislocated. Yeah, he kicked like three or four times to you, man. What's that? He kicked like three or four times to you, and you just kept trucking along, dude. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, that's one thing about me, man. You know, you, you go in there, and you, you fight, and everybody says, oh, I'll, I'll never tap, I'll go to sleep before I tap, or oh, I wonder what would happen if I broke the other, or I still keep going, if I broke the leg, or I still keep going. And so that's the big thing I proved to myself, was, man, no matter how tough it gets, I'm not going to quit. And, you know, and he, he kicked that arm about three times when it was already broken. And uh, I could have turned to, to Kerry Hattie, the, the judge, and, and stopped him. I could have just fell down. Um, actually, I didn't even fall down. Even when he pushed me against the cage, I was still trying to... I went back and watched the fight like a million times, of course. But I was still trying to use that arm to, to fend him off. And uh, not until he went for a takedown, I tried to grab at his leg with the broken arm. I saw you wince in pain. Himself. Yeah. And so, yeah, I fell from the pain, and then I turtled up. And even turtled up, I still tried to use that arm to, to stop him from hitting me. But, uh, you know, it's you know, just so much with one arm. And, and I won't give him this. He did do a good job of punching and not stopping. None of his, his punches really dazed me or rocked me. I mean, I got up. It's funny because I got up right after. I told Kerry, hey, you know, I understand it's good stoppage. 
And then I, I went straight to the crowd as a camera, and I was like, they didn't show it, but I was like pointing at my wrist trying to show everybody it's broken, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I just quit, you know? And, and, and so, uh, you know, I proved a lot to myself, I proved a lot to, to the trainers, and I hope I proved a lot to, to everybody in the UFC, uh, fighters, and, um, you know, the, the uh, top dogs up there, let them know that with, with you know, Roger Narvaez comes to fight, he comes to fight no matter what, he's going he's gonna to give it his all. And, and, you know, I did, it's just unfortunately I, I, I got in a situation where I couldn't defend myself anymore. You know, it is what it is. Mm. Right, yeah, th th I mean, that fight, saying what you just said, you know, just sticking it out, kind of having that that um, that heart, the, that oomph, you know, that, that X factor, you can't fucking, you can't really put a title on it, but you got it, and to be honest with you, man, like, I was kind of on the fence with you, I was like, let me check out what this guy has, I saw you actually fight live in Austin, Texas, when you fight Luke Barnott, and the yeah. funny thing was about that fight, I've had to have been sitting by your family, like me and my friends, because everyone around us was wearing like silverback shirts and screaming out, come on there, boys! <laughs> and <laughs> like the whole fight, and it was just like, I was just like, Jesus Christ, how many people did he bring with him? And, uh... Yeah, man, I've, I've, got, I've got a good hometown following. Yes. I, a following. Um, I try to be a humble guy and try to be respectful to, to all my opponents and everybody. I... You know, that's one reason I might not be the most marketable person because I'm not out there trying to hide fights by talking crap or getting in somebody's face uh, unless I legitimately do not like them very much, you know. But, um, you know, I've got I've got good people that, that surround me and, and uh, I've really been blessed to have the following that I have and, you know, some of that fans are definitely uh, some of the best fans out there in MMA. Right, absolutely. absolutely. And, I mean, it showed that night. Like, I was there and... I mean, it was it was incredible the amount of people that were that knew of you. I had never heard of you, quite frankly. I I didn't watch the Pat Cummings fight. I, I you know I didn't watch too much Pat Cummings after uh, Daniel Cormier. Um, right, right. And 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 so I really went back to look at your record, and I, I looked at you know like other fights you had done. I remember the Luke Bernat fight. Then I went back on your record, and I noticed you had a fight with our buddy, a uh, buddy of the show, and my buddy, uh, Matt Jones, man. Nice guy, Matt Jones. Uh, he has nothing but good things to say about you, and, and he said that was a tough fight that he had, but I was like, man, this guy's kind of, he's been around the block. And then I noticed after that fight was the fight you got into UFC with? Uh, after Matt Jones, I actually fought Hayward Charles. Okay. And, uh, we went to split decision. That, that fight was probably one of my worst performances. Um, and that's what I'm saying, man. I, I'm a real big man of faith, and I, I believe in, in, in God, and I believe He puts you in certain places and certain times for reasons. And, you know, coming off my worst performance, I, I got into the, to the coming fight, and uh, I was pretty much a stepping stone, um, you know, I, I, at that point. And, and I knew that. So that's why I said, I, I, you know, I've always been the underdog. Right. Uh, Luke Barnett, definitely, I was ready for that fight, and, uh, you know, I gave it everything I had, and, and you know, I showed the USD that, hey, this guy doesn't only, you know, belong here. He can, he can actually do some stuff. And uh, so, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we just keep the momentum going. And, and you know, this last fight, we might have set back. But, uh, like I said, I'm ready back to training, and I'll be ready to go, uh, hopefully, by, by late this year or the next year. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Do you – so how's the arm healing up? Is it – you know, a few weeks in, you're still in a cast. Did, did what, what all happened in the aftermath of that Theodoro fight? Yeah, you know, afterwards, uh, I had surgery about six days after. Um, so I couldn't really get in anywhere. And, uh, you know, I had surgery. I'm already out of the cast. I'm already working out. Um, I was wearing the cast for about two weeks. Uh, well, about three and a half weeks. I should have been in it for like six. But uh, I promised my doctor I'd be a good boy and not do anything stupid, and uh, <laughs> she took me out of it. I've just been really uh, baby in the injury, you know, still trying to work around it, and, uh, you know, just trying not to get out of shape, and, and uh, you know, everything has basically just been uh, going well. I, I've got a new strength and conditioning program that I'm working with, a new coach, uh, and uh, we're really excited about, about the future, about the, the way things are going. Yeah, that middleweight division is shaking up quite nicely. Uh, and and it's one thing, though, I wanted to point out, man, I was listening to one of your interviews, and you said you were like 270 pounds? 
And yeah, I used to be like 278 uh, when I started. The and, fuck, uh, man? That's crazy. I'm uh, a heavyweight and amateur, but uh, fighting fire 278 pounds is not fun, so <laughs> 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 I'm starting to lose some weight and uh, trying to get in shape a little bit. And so as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, that started happening, I started keeping it just doing, doing pretty well. Um, and right now, I'm probably walking about 15, 17, and, you know, fight at 185. So. That's incredible, man. That's all. I was I was a bit inspired by that because uh, I used to not be the most athletic guy. I used to, you know, I graduated high school, and I was around 305, and I, you know, dropped weight, and now I walk around about 220 or so. But, like, just to hear, right. like, a story like that where you used to fight as big weight, now you're fighting down here and you feel more healthy. It, I don't know, man. It, it kind of strikes a nerve with me, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I appreciate it, man. I think uh, a lot of people don't realize their potential, and I certainly didn't. And, and my thing with that I preach is, you know, as long as you believe it, you can achieve it, man. And, and, uh, you know, I try to tell all my guys, I'm the first guy out of Corpus Christi to make it to this level and it's not without a lot of stress, a lot of uh, sacrifice, and a lot of hard work. Uh, but you know, now that we're here, it's just fun and uh, I've got to just keep believing and I've got people around me that do. So we're ready to take this ride and keep going. Damn right, man. Damn right. Um, well, and another thing too that, that impressed me is what I didn't know your pedigree didn't realize how good of a jiu-jitsu fighter you were. My God, Roger, like, there's some shit that you do, like, outside of the cage and in some, like, jiu-jitsu, I guess there would be tournaments or matches and shit. So many videos of you on YouTube just wrecking shop on people. And then to to watch the, the Elias Theodoro fight where I'm listening, I watched it once just with the commentary with the Joe Rogan and the Mike Goldberg commentary. And then I watched it another time with your corners commentary. And when Elias took you down, they told you something. They were like, do the sweep, do the sweep. And the first time I watched it without the commentary, I didn't notice it. I thought Elias let up and then, you know, oh, Elias got himself in a, you know, he, he just, you know, he happened to get there like just by chance. No, I watched it again with your with the, the fighter, with your corner commentary. You did the sweep to get up, which was very yeah, impressive. Yeah, well, you know, it wasn't necessarily a sweep, but it was, uh, I actually attempted a sweep, and he passed. And once he passed, you know, my coach is real good. Uh, Hector Miguel is my head jiu-jitsu coach. He's real big on, uh, you know, getting the other road to get back to his feet. That's exactly what you did. And when I first started fighting, I kind of used with, I depended on my jiu-jitsu so much. And I think the Cummins fight opened me up to that, is that you can't just depend on being on your back and commit people. So now my jiu-jitsu is more wrestling-based. And so as soon as I see an opening and get back up, that's where I'm going. You know, I try to get up, and, and Elias, he didn't have very good pressure, so when he passed, I was, I was able to get up pretty easily. Yeah, it was pretty incredible, dude. I mean, uh, you know, Elias is not the best in any era. He's kind of good everywhere, but I was very impressed with the way you got back up. And I was very impressed with your jiu-jitsu skills, man. I, it it kind of blew me away. I was like... No way! Like, and, and all the support and love that you have here in Texas, man. Because we're we're out of Austin, so we're we're not too, you know, we're kind of neighbors in the sense. You know what I mean? We're not too far okay. away. <laughs> but um, yeah, well, well, I appreciate that, man. I mean, like I said, I take a lot of pride in my jiu jitsu, and uh, you know, we uh, we we train really hard. I actually train up in Austin uh, uh, with. Uh, uh, Austin Kickboxing Academy. Um, I've trained with Gracie Chibata up there. And, you know, my buddy uh, Andrew Craig lives up there, and uh, he's worked real well with me uh, these last couple fights. So, you know, I, I, I train up there with him, and uh, you know, to get you something I love, and always, uh, always think that's my first love. That's that's funny you mention that, man, because. We're gonna have we have uh, Randy Vera on the show. Like we're pre-recording it, but he's gonna be on the show live tomorrow. So, um, oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny you mentioned AKA. Yeah, man, he's a good guy, man. Uh, 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 but it's funny, small world, huh? Small world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, man. So, what do you? So you? I just saw on on Facebook. I don't know if people know this. Uh, you signed on for four more fights. 
Is that correct? Yeah, four more fights. I was on the last fight of my contract, and uh, I really appreciate, you know, Joe Silva and White giving me another opportunity. Uh, you know, I had one more fight. We renegotiated for Mr. They got me four more fights, got me a little team up, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going to make my mark for this next four fight run and hopefully get another extension. That's awesome, man. That's super awesome. That, you know, not everybody always gets to that extra chance or gets a chance to extend the contract, and there have been a lot of releases in the UFC, so uh, kudos to you, man. Uh, big res- big dabs, big respect to you, man. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, very, well, very much. You're a very humble guy, man, very humble guy. Speaking, speaking of all that, though, do you still are you still firemanning? Yeah, yeah, I'm a firefighter. Uh... That's awesome, man. I, would, would 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 there ever be a point? Say you're a contender in the UFC one day for the belt. You're two fights away. Would there ever be a point where you're like, uh, I got to take a year off firemaning to to go ahead and tra- would would that ever get to that point? Or do you just love firemaning yeah, so much? You know, I, I, I never say never. Uh, you know, uh, but at the same time, uh, man, I just there's, there's a, a pretty good retirement system. And uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for, uh, you know, my family. I'm looking for a future. And uh, if we really get to that point and I end up uh, seeing opening a gym or able to uh, provide a steady income for my family by doing that, then for sure. You know, I mean, that's why I say never say never. But as of right now, we're just taking it fight by fight. Next goal is just, uh, well, first of all, I go back to work full duty Monday. So get back with the guys. Uh, you know, help out the citizens of Corpus, and then, uh, you know, keep, keep uh, training and winning the next fight. That's awesome, man. That's a good That's a good attitude to have about everything. Well, real quick, Roger, uh, usually closer to the, to the end of our show, we have a segment that we call Random Ass Questions. And uh, okay. what, <laughs> well, <laughs> what I want to do, man, is bring out that. I, I've seen you have like some really funny moments. I want to try and bring that out. It's just actually a segment that we really do, though. Fifteen random ass questions could be anything from, you know, name so and so or whatever. You know, name your favorite something, whatever. It, it fifteen random ass questions, um, and uh, we're just kind of gonna go for it. So uh, first, All right, man, let's do it. first question, man. Favorite rapper? Favorite Lecrae. Who's that? Lecrae. Lecrae. Okay. Lecrae, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a Christian rapper, and uh, ever since I've uh, given my life to the Lord, I've listened to him. A lot of people don't uh, don't understand that Christian rap's got some of the dopest beats out there. Man. So Lecrae, look him up, man. I guess you should be a fan. Daps. Daps for that, man. Okay, favorite sport? Uh, mixed martial arts. <laughs> uh, dream job, man. UFC fighter. Oh, there we go. Uh, favorite cartoon growing up. Favorite cartoon growing up. Oh man, my Ninja Turtles. Uh, it's not a bad answer, man. Uh, uh, celebrity crush. Oh man, you're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> 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 oh, celebrity crush. Um, actually, man, I, I don't have one. Uh, I'm married to the most beautiful woman in the world, and, uh, <laughs> I, honestly, I really don't have a celebrity crush. That's a good answer, man. That's, that's respectable right there. Daps for that. Again, uh, most famous person you've met? Most famous person I've met? Dana White. <laughs> that's not a bad name. I would have to say, I'd have to say, uh, and the only reason I say that is because I, I only met Dana in my last fight, you know, three fights in, and uh, this is the first big card that he's, uh, he's made while I've been here, so I met him, and then Michael Irv, Michael Irv, that was cool for him to, uh, I had my broken arm, and I went up to him, and I said, sure, I just broke my arm this last fight, and people have been asking me all night, but I just want to introduce myself, and uh, <laughs> so that was, that was a cool little moment. Awesome, man, awesome. Um, 
favorite beer? I know you like to drink beer. I heard some interviews. What's your favorite beer, bro? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Michelob Ultra, man. <laughs> I like to keep it light. Yeah, that's a good answer, man. That's a good answer. Uh, favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time. Oh, man, I got I to think about that one. Um, <laughs> man. Rocky. Rocky? That's Rocky not a bad... Rocky 4, actually. Yeah. Rocky 4, actually. is probably my all-time favorite. I can watch that over and over and over. That's not a bad answer at all. I think anybody would... I think there's a lot of people that would agree with you there. Um, if your life was turned into a movie, who would play you? Who would play me? Well, uh, I have to say that I would me and my wife always joke about it because I think they called the... Uh, I had a couple of people call me, and I just went blank on his name, but the guy that comes out in uh, uh, White House Town, uh, White Dude, what's his name? Channing Tatum? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm blonde, I'm um, brown hair, but I've been calling him, like, closer to where I'm cutting weight, uh, but I've been calling him uh, a couple That's times, like and that's, uh, <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking hilarious! Oh, that's that's funny, man. That's awesome. Um, all right, so what food is your Achilles heel? Fried food, man. Anything fried. You take a sneaker and throw some. Fried food is just a killer for me. That's a good one. Pro weed or anti weed? Where do you stand? Uh, I would have to say pro, man. I mean, uh, I'm not saying I, I do it or condone it, but at the same time, I think it's just responsibly. It's no worse than alcohol. It's a good answer. Yeah. I think the majority would start to agree with you now, especially nowadays. Bob Sapp or James Thompson, who could you fight off in a rape situation? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't care if it's uh, Hercules, man. Nobody's going to take my man. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides yourself, who's the hottest MMA fighter? Okay, besides myself, I will. Okay, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean saying that I like, you know, my gender, but uh, keep my wife from uh, getting on my bad side. I have to go with, uh, let's see, I just go with GFT just because that's her favorite, and I might get to point you at. <laughs> He's a good-looking guy. He's a good-looking guy. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. You know, you don't have to be, you don't have to be uh, homosexual to say that. No, not at all. I am not. I have a girlfriend of three years, and I will yeah, gladly say he is a good-looking guy. Right? Yeah, he's a good-looking All right, who's the ugliest MMA fighter? Uh... Man, <laughs> there's a couple of them out there, and uh, I, I don't like to be mean, um, but but I think I've probably fought one of them, and I'll just let you leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving the political answer. My record and, and uh, you know, picture themselves. <laughs> oh man, if they, if they asked me, I would say Bigfoot. That's an ugly motherfucker. He, he got that head. You know what? <laughs> 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 Doesn't his head look like an Easter Island little stone? Uh, that's all I'm yeah, saying, man. He's got an enormous head. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't find me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that's funny, man. Okay, and then last question: Fallon Fox or Cyborg Santos? Who has a bigger dick? <laughs> well, definitely. Uh, Alan. I mean, she was born with one. She was born with one. Uh, and I think she probably still has it. If he decides to go back to, to being a man. Which, after his last couple of fights, he might want to do, seeing that it's probably not going to make it that far in MMA. <laughs> That's a good answer, man. Oh, man. Well, that was 15 random ass questions. Always a segment we do with our guests. Just try to have a little fun, break the monotony, because I, I can only imagine. How many interviews, you know, you do um, during fight week or leading up to camp that's just the same kind of, where do you, where did you start and how did you start? And I'm sure you already oh, have yeah, like. Absolutely. A lot of the same, a lot of the same questions. 
<laughs> right, man. And I, I'm sure it gets, like, you already have these answers in your head. It's just like my go-to answers. Boom, boom, I go to these. And so it's kind of just break the monotony and kind of get you out of that, you know, because that's not what we're, we're all about, man. Here at the Loaded Joes, we're all about talking some shit, watching some MMA, having a good time, you know, and uh, and that's what we try to come off, man. So we, we definitely appreciate you uh, on the show today, Roger, and uh, uh, when can we look, ideally look out for you next? You said in the next few months, close... Honestly, I gotta get with my team and stuff, but if everything goes as planned, we're probably looking to get back in there as soon as possible. Uh, unfortunately, with my injury, I, I got a plate in my arm now, which uh, makes it, you know, uh, pretty much... Uh, not only can it possibly break, but it's, it's not gonna, you know, you know it, it's, it's gonna stay there. The only thing is, I've gotta wait for that tissue to form around it before I can really start taking kicks. So it's, it's really gonna be a waiting game. I'm probably looking at early next year just to be safe. But, uh, man, that just gives me a hell of a lot of time to improve and get better. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really gonna just embrace that and, uh, you know. Ready, uh, be ready to uh, get back in there, give them a call, and we'll be around you know, January, February. That's awesome, man. That's super awesome. We're, we're going to look out for you, man, and we'll definitely be rooting for you, local Texas fighter, you know, a boy, Roger Navaris. Um, and, uh, you know, another thing, Roger, uh, do you have any sponsors? Where can people find you? Can they find you on the Facebook, the Twitter grams? Uh, let everybody yeah, know where man, you at, man. Uh, you know, my, my Twitter handle is uh, Silverback316. Um, also on Instagram at that, um, and then on Facebook, Roger Narice. Uh, I've also got a fan page. You know, I, I generally accept everybody. Of course, if I start seeing any kind of un- inappropriate posts, uh, some really serious stuff on there, you know, race, racial comments, slurs, anything like that. I really, you know, it's my prerogative. It's my Facebook. I, I don't, I don't condone any of that. So you'll find yourself easily deleted. But I definitely uh, appreciate everybody that follows me. Um, as far as my sponsors, you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, there's too many to name, but uh, first and foremost, you know, uh, without them, I, I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the stuff I do financially. So, uh, you know, thank you to all my sponsors. You, all, you guys know who y'all are. I'm sure of that shirt. I'm sure of that fan page. You know, uh, I appreciate it. And then, uh, of course, uh, should have been my first thank you, but, you know, I've got to give a shout out to God. Um, you know, I've been in, in, you know, I'm 31 years old while walking on this earth, and uh, I gave my life to him about three years ago, and, and, you know, there's people that don't believe. Uh, I certainly was one of those until I felt the uh, effects of the Holy Spirit on me, and I can just say that he's, uh, he's along with me for this ride, and it's been great. So, uh, thank you guys, and I uh, appreciate uh, y'all taking the time to hear Dope, man. Roger, I definitely appreciate the time, man. I, I know you got to get the train. I know life happens, but uh, we definitely appreciate you. We hope to have you back before your next fight, and uh, that way we can talk some more shit and uh, figure out what's going on in life, man. Yeah, thanks a lot, brother. I appreciate it. Like I said, you guys are awesome. Man. Let me joke, so y'all just keep doing your thing, and uh, God willing, I'll be back uh, sooner than later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, good vibes to you, good prayers to you, good support to you, and we'll look out for you, brother. Alright, take care. You do the same, man. Peace. And we're back. Money Blakeweather has a sexy voice right there. I'll tell you what, man. What do you think about that interview, John Miller? The interview was great, Blake. I'm fucking glad I got to hear the whole thing in detail. So, uh, <laughs> other than that, I mean, do you, is it, you know, Nevera is someone that you want to have later on, you know, back hey. on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the guy's a nice guy, uh, and I think he. I mean, he's he's got four more fights with UFC, as you heard. Uh, he's he's not too happy with the UFC deal, yeah. with the Reebok, as you heard. I mean, he's he's trying to be as respectful of the UFC as he can, um, and you know, uh, I, I think he's somebody to look forward to. I mean, I, I I was really impressed with his performance, as you heard, like with the the Elias Theodoro fight, the last fight he had on UFC 185. Um, and, and I'm expecting big things. I mean, he, once he comes back from that b- broken arm, uh, he's he, like you said, he'd probably come back close to the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year, and hopefully we can have him back on, man. I, I really enjoyed uh, interviewing him. I really enjoyed talking to him. The guy's a really nice guy, really down to earth. And again, that 15, 15 random ass questions, dude. That breaks down everybody at their court. <laughs> yeah, they seem a lot more human. You know, uh, uh, they, uh, 
those random 12, 15 questions, <laughs> of course, leave me to fuck it up. But, uh, yeah, it opens a lot of people up, which I like. I mean, we, we actually get to see a little bit more of their personality outside of their actual sport, except when we ask them whose dick is bigger. You know, <laughs> that they, one, they, they, they never know, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, man, they never know whose dick is bigger. I don't even know whose dick is bigger. I'd, I'd say Cyborg's... Do you want to know? I don't want to find out. <laughs> uh, anyways, man, that moves us on to our next segment, though. We're talking some shit. Moves us on to our next segment. We did this segment. Where's our producer, Uncle Bud? Oh, he did? Okay. We don't need producer, Uncle Bud. We can do this, this segment alone. Uh, we've got this segment and um we don't need him to introduce it uh called shit mma fans say um won't we give a won't we give our fans a bit of a gander a bit of a gander at that shit that mma fans say hector lumbo been on steroids since he was born i promise yo i need to go off that stool that's some bullshit oscar over ain't no bitch when he was in strike force you already know I bet you Cain Velasquez beats Ronda Rousey. Ronda couldn't take Floyd in a, in, a, in a boxing fight. That's all I'm saying. Yo, did you hear GSP's coming back? Nah, that, John, Johnny Henry's retired as best just. Is he? Is he really coming back? Bro, t- tell me why Bigfoot head looked like an Easter Island statue. If they lay any closer, he might have to buy him dinner. Boxing is dead. Bro, Anderson Silva is the greatest of all time. Connor likes to fight midgets. Ben Askren is super funky, though. I don't know. I like Ben Askren. I used to not like him, but I don't, I don't know where I ended up liking him. At. I do need to cut his hair. I'm sorry. That, that just looks ridiculous. Like fucking keyboard warriors. Fuck Dana White. Bro, have you read the Underground? All the new shits over there. Bro, did you hear about Phil Davis? All of the new shit. Tony Bellator? All of it. You know Front Row Brian? A Vita or He got his lost sister cutting his hair cut. That's how bad it looks. Bro, Fado Art. Is a fucking the beast of all time. I don't give a fuck what no one says. Bro, you think GSP and Roy would fight? Do you think Fedor could beat Brock Lesnar? Dude, we all know Brock Lesnar doesn't like to get hit. Do you think Alistair was on some shit? Do you think Gustafson won between John Jones? He won that fight he lost against John Jones. Unofficial. GSP is probably like the best wrestler of all time. the MMA fans say. If that wasn't something that you said, you're probably not an MMA fan. That's all I'm saying. Uh, (laughs) Oh, man. That was a pretty good show, though. We had a lot of good fun. Um, So, yeah, what's coming up? We got the UFC Manila card coming up next week. Um, We got... What else do we have? We have the week after. Oh! UFC 187, the week after that. Uh, the Manila cards, Faber and, and, and Edgar, I'm surprised he didn't jump the fuck up. Yeah, God damn, John Miller. I'm going to get a new co-host. <laughs> <laughs> He's fired, bitch. He is done with. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got the UFC 187. And then something. We got, like, Dan Henderson versus Tim Boach, first week of June. In Louisiana? Yeah. That's a big card. So anyways. Um, John. We're ending the podcast. Where can people find you at, man? They can find me at angryorchard.com. No, I'm just fucking <laughs> with you. Uh, no, uh, Facebook.com. Uh, John M A T X <laughs> Slash Angry Orchard. <laughs> nah, yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, are, are, are they can find me at myspace.com slash uh, John M A T X if you still have that. Because I don't even know if my profile exists. But Hey, John, what's that one website that we go to? Go look out of all of our MMA news. We go to fightbookmma.com. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fightbookmma.com. Uh, yeah, that's our sponsor. We gotta give a shout out to FightBookMMA.com. Uh, they love us. Uh, leading underground source in everything in your life, uh, MMA related news, uh, quotes, um, 
stories about your mom fighting MMA. We got all that shit on FightBookMMA.com. Uh, what's that website again, John Miller? What's that one time? FightBookMMA.com. Dot com from John dot Maddox com, live. slash Miller. Miller doesn't know Miller time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's your boy uh, Money Blake Weather. You can find me on uh, on Twitter. You just type in Money Blake Weather. Uh, it's actually my handle or uh, at Blake Stevenson. B l a k e s d p h e n s o. When you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Facebook. Find the show, follow us on Twitter, find us on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, find us uh, uh, in, in your uh, older sister's closet, because uh, that's where she keeps us, and uh, or you can uh, find us uh, on fightbookmma.com, uh, uh, lead podcast on the on the website, we love uh, that website, they love us, we're getting shirts soon, did I tell you about the shirts? Hell yeah. We're getting some fucking shirts soon. Uh, shout outs to my, chat out, chat out. Shout outs to my boy Canelo. What are you looking at? Nudies? Oh, sorry. He's getting distracted. Oh, he's looking at some nudies. Nah, no. Go big lips and big tits. Big lips and big tits. That's all that counts, right? In life. Am I right, guys? Did you tell me John got some action because he said she, he's with the Low Judgment May podcast? So good for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, man, uh, follow us, tweet us, do something, go touch yourself and listen to our podcast. We're out. Peace.